We just went live, by the way, just so you know. Oh, wonderful. Oh, okay. I just, I got my 10-minute timer going. So, Les, mm -hmm. I don't, you never responded to me when I sent the links for Astral Tabletop. I put everybody's characters out on Astral Tabletop so that you guys could join the game out there. So, I was just having issues with Owlbear. I didn't like it as much, and I want to see how it goes with uh, with That's Astral. Right. So, if you have not already, click the link. I put it in chat up a little bit. And okay. Let me find it if it's still there. Yes, uh, there oh. it is. Yeah. If you click there, if you don't already have an Astral account, just boom, join. And then right. as soon as you join, I will assign your character to you. And that way you can see, you can open up your character sheet and you can see I actually put your actions and stuff. If, if you've never worked with Astral, we can go over it real quick. But when you click your character sheet, or actually you don't even need to click your character sheet. I think the player view has your actions in the bar at the base of your view. And I put in all your, your standard stuff like die 100 dice rolls for thief checks, attacks with different weapons and stuff like that. So. Um, all right, thank you. <clears throat> Anyway, let me. That was nice of you. Yeah, as soon as you arrive and check in, then I'll I'll assign them to you. Yeah. If, you just, if you just press the space bar, your character sheet comes up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I just uploaded a PDF for everybody, but the PDFs don't do anything clickable wise, right. like templates. Somebody's working on a one e two e template. They just haven't published it yet. But at least you can, if you want, right? If you know, you can roll dice any way you want in the dice chat, et cetera. You can roll. <laughs> oh, speaking of beer, let me go grab my beer real quick. <laughs> I'll be back momentarily. Now, when I'm on, when I'm on uh, Twitch... It just says, uh, this video is only available to subscribers of Paraland Adventures for some reason. Are you watching one of the older videos, or are you watching... No, I'm not, videos? no. Oh. It might just be a bug. I do get that occasionally. Usually I just close the window, open it back up, and it solves itself. Especially if right. I just logged in, it can be an issue. All right. Yeah, because I've, I've seen that to places I'm actually subscribed to before, and then it just fixes itself in a minute or two. Oh, okay. Just, yeah. I, mean, I don't have to watch it because I'm here. <laughs> but, uh, I just want you to know I got a natural <laughs> I see Ooh, that. Nice. Oh, they, they even make it green, too. Look at that. Okay. Let's see. I'm still not sure where my... I want to let you know I got 11. <laughs> that, sounds about, that sounds about right. I think I'm gonna have to get myself a beer too. Cool. We got a few minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna grab my crack pipe. <clears throat> All right. Hey, hey Valdrin has arrived. And... What kind of beer are you having, Sean? I so just quick. got a Budweiser, and then I've also got my Red's Apple Ale because I like that too. Oh, like yeah. use the, use the same character. Um, actually, I no, I am assigning you a character okay. right now. So if you, from yeah, yeah, actually, you don't have to create anything. If you refresh the page, your character should be assigned to you now. Okay. Just let me know. And then, in the character view, in the player view, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there should be yeah several boxes with letters in them. Yeah. And so for your character. Um, if you mouse over it, you can see L means long sword, D means dagger, yeah. S means saving throw, T means thief skill check. Okay. Um, you can elect to use the dice that are in the um, uh, in the, the chat box. If you open up the chat box in the upper right, there's a little 
thing that looks like a chat with three dots. If you haven't already opened it, you can open the chat and see. At the bottom, it's got all the dice. You can just click those, and it'll roll the dice yeah. automatically, and you can add whatever bonuses. Same thing with your swords. The only difference is with the swords, if I were to click yours and, and you do it, if you look, it's a 1d20 plus 1 because you have a plus 1 longsword, so it gives you plus 1 to hit. And then on the damage, it's a... Um, a uh, oh why is that a d20 plus one damage let's that's no bueno oh, that sounds great i'm, I'm thinking i would uh i would think that uh i would like a d20 damage too oops that's a dagger let's go with the long sword edit this yeah no <laughs> let's try 1d see the long sword's 1d8 uh Damage. I don't know why I forgot to do this. Where is this small, medium? And we're going to go 1d12 plus 1 damage versus large. Glad I checked. I thought I checked all these all before, so. Uh, remove from sheet. Now, if I go back and I click your dagger, it's, yep. So then, it, and then now it rolls your damage versus large and versus um, small, medium. So anyway, so just by clicking on those boxes, it'll it'll actually roll the dice. Roll right? the dice for you, including your Grand damage dice. Right. Cool. Right, and then you can see, of course. If you click your dagger, it says plus one additional versus small. So if you got an 11, you actually got a 12. If you got a two damage, you actually got a three damage, et cetera, et cetera, right? Just because okay, yeah. cause you have that dagger plus two, plus three, or whatever it is, right? So, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, um, I just wanted to put those in there. That way we can all roll the dice from here and I can show it on our. Ah, oh, crud. started a little bit too late <clears throat> that's okay wasn't paying attention I should have started about 30 seconds ago but we are getting ready to go live so looks like we've got most everybody did you say someone wasn't coming well no it looks like we have everybody now um, one two th no we're missing somebody still yep yeah, but Cannibal. But yeah, uh, yeah, Cannibal hasn't shown up, and I also know that uh, Wayward. Uh, no, Sir? the game was not canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and uh, oh, are you on mobile? Mobile? No, I'm on my laptop. Okay, so if you don't already have the link, I am going to post the link for Astral because that's where everybody's at. So I just posted it in the game chat. Uh, you need to join Astral. Once you, if you don't already have an account, it'll ask you to create a quick account. Um, it's free. And then when you're in, don't worry about creating a character or doing anything. I will assign you a character. And once I assign you your character, you can refresh the page and your character will be there for you. Um, okay. Because I'm not using Owlbear Rodeo this time. I'm, I'm moving everything over to Astral because that's what I'm getting more familiar with, and I like its tools a little bit better. So, plus it's only for one day. So, what were you using uh, on Friday night, Sean? I was using Astral on Friday. Oh, you were, yeah. Yeah. yeah that looked pretty good, yeah. Yeah, I like the layout. I like the UI. There's a few things I don't like, um, and Adam and I were actually talking about this where. I like to play ambiance music, but the problem is, is that what I set the ambiance in, hey, there's a wave here, here. What I actually set the uh, ambiance to as a level of volume is you guys don't see that same level of volume. Oh, yeah. You guys have to do it yourself. But, and the problem is if you edit your volume to lower it down, now nobody can hear you talking or anything, or you can't hear us talking because the volume is so low. So. I mean, you can, uh, to get around that, you can kind of, like, you can mute Astral, um, by just muting the tab. Right yeah. In Chrome. 
we turn it says I need a character. Yep, I am assigning you one right now. I just ah, assigned there we go. It. Yep. I'm in. All right, cool. And here we go. <laughs> and we are live. Hello, gentlemen, ladies. If you guys are out there, I appreciate everybody coming by to uh, check out our, hopefully, our final expedition into the to the ruins of the Mismarch. I'm Sean, your DM. Memorial Day. Yes. Uh, I always feel kind of conflicted when people say Happy Memorial Day because how do you really be happy about the fact that your fellow soldiers and brothers didn't make it out and you did? But uh, yes, if uh, I find myself saying Happy Memorial Day as well. But hopefully, if nothing else, you are all enjoying your Memorial Day, um, enjoying a little bit of time with family, barbecues, cookouts, whatever it is that you happen to be doing. Um, we're going to have to finish this game within the next 30 minutes, folks, because if we don't, I'm going to miss Jay's stream because Jay decided to run his gabin at 7.30 tonight. So I imagine we're going to have everybody that might come in to watch us is going to go over to watch him, but that's fine. I never really liked Jay anyway, so that's totally cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, um, for those that are here, I definitely appreciate it. For those that are not, um, hopefully uh, you're coming through and watching this um on a on whatever your favorite platform is uh whether it's uploaded to youtube or whether you're watching it as part of our saved videos out on uh twitch um tonight like i said is is we're hopefully to finish up our ruins of the mist marsh um basically what we we encountered last week was the party was hired uh to investigate some um, incidents with lizard-like folk in the mist marsh near blackwall keep um, we didn't really do the whole adventure itself. We just sort of started at the keep itself because we just sort of play testing this in hopes that we can run it, um, when Greyhawk Con comes, uh, in October. Um, so the party, uh, investigated the, the keep itself. Um, they encountered a few things upstairs, including a shambling mound, which took a long time to finally beat down. Um, mm -hmm. but they were finally successful. Additionally, they, um, found a little bit of clues and, and hints in the in the upper garden um, regarding the name of the place and the the, the, the last king of the uh, keep, uh, which you found was from Clan Mumantadin. Um, and then uh, slowly you worked your way inside where you actually met um, the ghost of King Duflik who explained to you that long ago a wizard of power came from the west and with him, he had a talisman of some sort. And that talisman apparently held the essence of a being that he called the Faceless One. And uh, Banabal, our faithful of Pelor, um, translated that to mean Jubilex, um, the, uh, which is sort of the, the ooze god, if you will. Um, and they call him the Faceless One specifically because of that, because he's made up of oozes and slimes and, and other nasties down in the abyss. So apparently this mage of power had this talisman that held essence of Jubilex in it. And Jubilex, not being the very understanding guy that he is, sent demon after demon after demon to try to retrieve it. And apparently one of those demons laid waste to what was the clan Momata Den Keep. Um, then probably not in a marsh, more in the mountains and, and stuff or in the hills at the base of the mountains uh, in the surrounding area. But be that as it may, the clan was destroyed. And now this ancient lost ruin has been sinking into the marsh slowly. Working your way down below, they, they discovered a, a little bit of undead activity in the form of what appear to be whites. Um, and though they did fight um, some creatures, they elected to sort of banish these unholy creatures away and then he snuck through a door uh, that was inlaid with silver and from there they found themselves um, in the entrance to what can what they believe is to the mines below so that's sort of where we're gonna take off hey pratt what's going on brother thanks for showing up <laughs> Uh, Jay's laughing at us because he said he can have them both up, but that's totally fine. I get that that um, he was be, he was jealous of our Monday stream and he tried to jump in on our action, but that's all right. Not a big deal, man. We appreciate every viewer that we can get. Jay, thanks for showing, brother. Um, 
So uh, that's sort of where we left off last week is you guys have entered through this door um, down here. Um, and this door, once again, is a, is a solid, actually double door inlaid with silver, which apparently the whites have been trying to get through and scrape through. But because of the silver and the stone, they weren't able to make it through. And, of course, you guys did and closed the door behind you, leaving the whites behind to be dealt with at a later time. So you find yourself now in a worked stone passage that um, quickly becomes natural stone passage. Um, as you guys can hear sort of the soft uh, sound of winds blowing through caverns and tunnels uh, coming from up ahead. Um, I'm not sure right now if I have you guys in the exact order you want. Um, since you are on astral right now i'd like to give you guys the opportunity sort of click on your token you can drag and drop it and move yourself wherever you want i just kind of want to get a feel that you guys are able to do that with uh with all of your characters um and right now uh, we have everybody but bannable so i'll be playing bannable's part uh, until such a time as bannable arrives if he's able to make it um, i'm not sure i haven't heard from troy uh, today so i'm not really sure so um once you guys have confirmed that you can kind of move your tokens around um, yeah, move my guy fine, yeah. Okay, uh, Valdrin, go ahead and move yours. Valorius, did you already move yours, you said? Yeah. That's okay, it. yep. All right, cool. So, Valdrin. Wait, how do I do that? So, all you have to do is click on your token. I've got your token right up here, if you can see your guy right at the head up there with Valorius. Right. If you just click, it's, it's literally drag and drop. It's literally, you can click and drag them wherever you want. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, there you go. So, and, and the reason I do this is just so that uh, I can move your tokens for you guys if you want, if you just tell me where you want to go. But okay. this, this also gives you the option to say, hey, I'll, if, I'm, if I'm doing it incorrectly, you can put yourself wherever you want on the map, right? So, sure. So, that being said, um, uh, originally we had had Valdrin out front sort of leading point because of his thiefly abilities. Um, how and then Monkey was, or I should say, Brodus was uh, near him because he also has the the skills. Uh, but I'm not sure what order you guys want to go now because, as you can see, the passage narrows up ahead slightly. Um, and you guys, I just sort of want you guys to get yourselves in in what kind of order do you think you would want to go, right? Whether it's single file or double file. Each one of these squares is 10 feet, by the way. Um, which is why your characters are relatively small on the map. Um, and again, if you want, you can zoom in on your version as well, because the version I have, I've got zoomed in pretty far. So that being said, um, we have just left the whites behind. Uh, we're seeking to go into the uh, into the the dungeons, if you will, or the, the tunnels below that, that make up the mines beneath the keep. Um, and we do know that there are, by the way, I made a mistake last week. I called those lizard creatures troglodytes, but I mean, called them uh, kobolds, but they're not. They're troglodytes. Um, and okay. you guys recognize the troglodytes and they stink rather badly because of their, their scent um, sacks that they've got on them. Uh, they, they give off a horrendous odor, um, which was in the room previously where you guys found those, those dead creatures slain by the whites, apparently. Um, but you do know that there is apparently a tribe of these troglodytes down below, um, according to what King Duflik told you, as well as um, a demon of some sort um, lies below as well. So um, what to expect, you are not sure, other than a lot of death and destruction. Um, but here we go. So what order do we want to go? Let's say we do what we were doing before with the thief and monk ahead. Okay, so we're going to have Brodus and Valdrin up front. All right, so let's go ahead and move them, and I'll put Brodus up there. I don't know if you guys want to go side by side or if you want to go Valdrin you first for however many feet. Um, it is dark, of course. Um, you guys have been here long enough that probably another torch is going to have to be lit. Um, I believe I have continual light on my. Oh, you are correct. You have the kids. Yeah, right. Thank you for reminding me. You have the kids. Toss that down the hallway. Okay. Yeah, you have it on a dart, right? Cast on a dart, I think. You said? Yep. Yeah. I believe so. So, um, tossing. Oh, Brit, mm -hmm. I was going to say, Brodus' suggestion hang back ten, about 10 feet behind me. I'll go first. How far will the light from the uh, dart go? 
most uh, of the continual light, correct me if I'm wrong, it isn't it a 30-foot uh, radius or a 30-foot, is it 20-foot radius or 30-foot radius on continual light? 15-foot radius. 15, okay, so 30-foot total. So basically a 15-foot radius. So you could toss it out and it would come back towards you about 15 feet. So if you toss it, say, out here, it would then shine light to you as well as what's what's up ahead. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm wondering if I can position myself in such a way that I can see just at the very edge of the uh, continual light without yeah. without having to throw it ahead. So I'll take point and do that. Rotus, you back me up by, what, 10, 15 feet, something like that? Okay. Yeah, but I suggest that we walk quietly. Yes. Okay. So then, if you guys are going to do your silent move, so just as a uh, as a good test of our dice roller, can I get one of or each of you to roll your thief skill for good? Awesome, Brodus oh, yeah. is a twenty-one. What's your move, silent, uh, Brodus? Oh, Valdrin. Valdrin is called whisper for a reason. Yeah. Yep. I believe it's uh, forty-seven. Nice. So both of you extremely, extremely quiet. And as you move forward into um, the uh, tunnels ahead, this small unworked stone once again starts to become worked stone as you enter in what appears to be some sort of a nexus. And as since you are so, so quiet, Valdrin, as you approach, you can actually hear grunts uh, of, of some kind uh, and, it, and then you hear a, a response grunt come from a little bit further in. Apparently there are creatures inside here somewhere um, that are either talking and then you hear a response. Um, and as Brodus comes up behind you, um, you know, he can't see all the way in there, but you can, you can see pretty much into this room, you see that it is, again, a nexus of some kind. Um, right in the middle of this large chamber, there is a, um, a large hole cut into the ground with rigging set up above it. Um, looks like very old rigging, kind of shoddy maybe because it's been sort of there for a long time. Um, but there are large buckets to lower whatever the, uh, using the rigging to lower it all the way down into whatever is down below this place. Um, uh, there are, uh, I should say, in the in the center of the room, there is a, a large forge off to the left um, that you can see that the, the bellows and all the other pieces have sort of um, tattered and broken. Um, you can see above it, there's a small vent that used to allow for smoke to escape to go up. Um, however, um, it has long since been dormant, and now there is nothing but a small trickle of blackish, brackish water that sort of drips onto the floor, leaving a slight pool uh, inside the old forge as well. Um, you can see also across the room um, over here on the left and on the right, you can see there's actually lit torches um, that are that are flickering so someone or something has been here um, recently or is here recently and you can see that they have torches set up there um, there's an exit tunnel um, uh, way off past the forge um, that you can see because of the torches over here you can actually see that there's sort of an exit tunnel leading up that way the uh, bestial grunting, uh, about how far away from me was it? That, uh, so it's sort of hard to that? tell in here because it sort of echoes, mm -hmm. um, but you would say um, at least maybe 40 or 50 feet, um, uh, but it sort of echoes around here, so exactly where it comes from, you're not sure. Could I tell anything about the grunting? Like, did it sound like a, hey, how's it going? Fine. Or uh, did it sound uh, like... Uh, what intruder? languages do you speak? Uh, not troglodyte, I can tell you that. It was uh, dwarf, <laughs> dwarven, orcish, and uh, common and these camps. Yeah, it does. It so in your, from your estimation, it didn't sound like it was an alarm being raised, like somebody yelling and whatever, saying, "Hey, look over here, there's something yeah. coming." Right? Um, it was more just sort of like conversation going on. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, man? Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm gonna fall back a little ways and inform everyone of what I saw. Okay. 
So as you fall back and as you're leaving, suddenly passing your view, you see this creature. He doesn't seem to see you. He's walking. He doesn't look down the tunnel toward you, but he sort of walks there, and then he walks there, and then he's walking this way. Sort of like he's walking around, right? Just, um, he has a spear. Yeah. Um, he's wearing uh, remnants of, like, it looks like a piecemeal patchwork leather type armor. Um, but he literally did not see you or hear you, and he just sort of walks. And then he kind of disappears from view again. Okay, I'll definitely mention that to them. Hey, hey guys, can I just interrupt for one second? I'm sorry. Sure. Um, so on Astral, I'm not seeing anything You're besides not... the, the first map you showed at the start. I'm, I'm seeing... Uh, hang on, let me double check. I apologize. When I look on Twitch, I'm seeing a lot more on Twitch. Yeah, so let me see. Apologies. Uh, let me... Well, no, it's fine. Yeah, I'm going to make sure that... Let's Is see. everybody else seeing the same that I'm not seeing on Astral? Or... So... On Astral, I just see what my character can see. In the yeah, I can see just fine. Yeah, Yeah. so fine. hang on just a second. Uh, that was uh, that was your character, Valorius? Yeah. All right, so on Astral, when I click, you're on the map. Okay, just yeah. do me a favor. Can you just refresh your page? Yeah. Just to make sure and see if it shows up now. I still, I still don't see everything that's showing on Twitch. So I see, I see, I see, yeah, what I see on Twitch now is exactly what I see on my screen. When earlier, yeah. like you were showing, you were showing that whole room. I did not see that. Now yeah. See now that yeah. So showing. yeah, on Twitch, you guys can see what I, what my view is, but on Astral, you should only see what your character sees. So oh, okay, yeah. I got it. So okay. That's All exactly right, why. Yeah, no problem. So, and again, it's, it's sort of the it's the downside of streaming. Um, if people are out there, they can see what I can see. What I okay. was going to do originally was I actually have a, a second account that I can log into as a player, so it would only show the player view out on Twitch. But I said, you know what? I don't even want to mess with that right now. I'm just if they see stuff, they see stuff. I'm pretty sure you guys are decent enough players. You can sort of mm -hmm. keep the meta away from the real so right now yeah. whatever your character sees on um astral is technically what you see um right. and then i try to show you guys stuff as, as best as i possibly can so right okay thank you that, yep. sorry to no yeah. dude you're fine no that's good that's why we do this right so again it's a new thing for some people so we'll figure it out so that being said you do see um, the one troglodyte, Valdrin, sort of passes by your view and goes counterclockwise around the forge that's in the center um, of the room and uh, uh, he kind of disappears behind the forge and then you don't see him again so you don't know if he continued on or you just lost sight of him or whatever but you can hear him sort of grunting and talking and then there are echo grunts coming back from from left and right and distance and stuff so there's obviously more than one probably more than a few um, but as far as a count goes you're not sure exactly how many there would be Okay, I'm going to go back, and like I said, I'll inform the guys of what I saw. Okay. And I also will emphasize that the uh, there seemed to be this uh, belief that we might be able to recruit the slave underdark slaves who were there, which I assume would be the troglodytes. Right. Problem is going to be communicating with them. So I'm not sure. We don't have a mage in the group. Do you ask comprehend languages? Actually, no, we need tons for that. I yes, think we're tired of that. Even if I did have the spell prepared, I wouldn't. they wouldn't be able to understand me. So unless any of you speak a common tongue with them, it's going to be difficult to communicate. <laughs> you sound like a Wookiee. <laughs> <laughs> so then, what do we want to do? Uh, just pack our bags okay. and go home, or what do we want to do? No. Uh, wh who has a chance? Who who wants to try and engage them in dialogue? You make like hand gestures and stuff to convey our intentions. Because what I'm thinking is that uh, myself and the worthy monk can slip into the room and hide in shadows, or try to. Okay. You guys come up and you wind up talking, mm -hmm. and we'll just basically be there, just falling back 
holding back, make, trying to make sure everything's cool, and covering the way out if we need to take it. It would likely be best for me to remain at least slightly out of sight. I'm still holding on to the spell, and uh, and he'll show that he's still holding that little white orb he had cast. Uh, yeah. During the white, uh, during the white encounter, and yep. it would probably be best if I didn't seem we didn't seem aggressive. Right. I'll just remain out of sight, and if I hear the sounds of fighting, I'll come in to save the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So who's going to be doing the negotiating? I guess the one with the highest charisma. I was just going to say. I that. was going to say, absolutely. Yeah. So. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> so, oh, wait, is that you? Imagine that. So wow. as as you as you sort of move up, and I'm going to move you guys' characters up a little bit here. Um, as you begin to move up, you hear movement coming off from the right, and you can see that coming from uh, off to the right in this direction over here. Uh, another troglodyte. Not sure if it's the same one, Valdrin. He looks very similar to the one that you saw a moment ago. Um, but as he passes across, you step in um, and I should say uh, uh, Bannable will back you up because, you know, Bannable being the follower yeah. of Paylor, he would he would be up there to to give guidance to you as necessary as his as he is wise beyond his years um and so you sort of approach and the uh the troglodyte sort of stops and all of a sudden he starts going and he lowers his spear and he points it right at you i'm gonna stand there and i'm gonna raise my hands all right, he's actually looking. Uh, you're actually behind, hiding in shadows, I believe you said. Yeah, but I'm just going to stand. In that case, if I'm successfully hiding in shadows, I'm just going to stay there. Okay. Um, and Do what Bannable does. As, as he sort of moves up toward you, um, um, Arthas sort of lowers his spear, and, and then suddenly appearing um, off from the left and from the right, another pair of troglodytes, one a little bit closer off to the left. The other one comes from the right area and he sort of positions himself near the, the, the whatever the great forge is. Um, and they sort of, they all lower their spears at you um, and basically telling you halt, cease and desist, etc., etc. Although what they're saying, you have no idea. What do you want to do? I hold my hands and say, Cease, you know, we come in peace. Um, we wish you parlay. Darmok and Jalad, that's an agro. That's how it sounds like. <laughs> As they sort of, again, they uh, they hold their spears down. Um, and you're you're sort of talking to him, and, and Bannable's up next to you as well, sort of weapon in one hand, sort of other hand, sort of up. <laughs> What do we want to do? How are we going to try to communicate with these guys? Um, you draw something on the direct ground. Okay. What are you going to try to draw? Uh, the symbol of peace, whatever it is. Um... Hmm. I don't know what that would be. You would have to describe it to me. Like from the okay. city. <laughs> yeah. Circle with a line in the middle and then two smaller lines, you know, what, diagonally branching up at the bottom. <laughs> Not really sure. It's in the uh, Greyhawk uh, because it's here. Yeah, there the, we go. Uh, I would know that. Yeah. Hang on just yeah. a second, folks. There's, yeah. a, there's, there's, a, uh, there's a whole page or, or two of uh, common runes. If you guys give me just a second. Troy, thanks for showing, brother. Um, I just, hey, Troy. I just assigned Bannable to you. So your character sheet should be now available to you. If you've never used um, Astral before, at the bottom of your player view, you should see that I I put in three little uh, I put in three things for you. Um, one of them was your mace attack. One is a cure light wound spell, and the other is a saving throw roll. Um, M C and S. You can also hit the space bar. It'll open up your character sheet, and you can actually look at your character sheet. Um, to see the character sheet that I've imported for you. Unfortunately, there's no clickable items on your character sheet. It's just a PDF rendering. Um, but 
anyway, that said. Um, so, uh, have you been listening at all? Uh, Troy, did you, did you kind of get caught up with this, or um, this is a quick rehash? Um, Artheus and Banable are approaching what are now appears to be five troglodytes armed with spears, wearing leather-type armor, albeit rather ratty and, and falling apart looking. Um, they've lowered their spears and are sort of croaking at you, um, obviously telling you, you know, don't come any further. But um, Artheus is up here trying to figure a way to parlay with them to to get you guys past. Would, would we say that Artheus would know those common runes? I would, I would say that there are probably certain common runes that, that he might. Yeah, this is. All paladins have to be diplomatic in some form, you know, and they'd be educated diplomatic, so it would make sense for him to know, like, some runes to communicate. Let me tell you what this is. This is page 17 of the World of Greyhawk is a Tear, Portentous Runes and glyph Glyphs. Herewith follows a compendium of the more common runes and glyphs likely to be found in Eldritch writings and ancient buildings. Uh. And basically, the idea is that they may contain different ideas to different peoples. However, these are commonly used to indicate, like, danger, we mean no harm, elements, types of danger, etc. And it, there is one for friendly. Okay. Okay. We have to consider that these troglodytes might be illiterate. Well, the thing is, it's not. that's why they're runes. They're not, they're more pictog pictog pictoglyphic rather than uh, writing, writing, if that makes sense. Okay. These are just meant for, like, you know, if you, even if you're illiterate, you it's kind of like looking at a stop sign. You kind of recognize. Vikings and the runes, and their runes. Runes never yeah. developed into a full language, but, you know, Vikings could understand it anyway. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so you sort of start to draw this little... And he sort of, this guy sort of backs off a little bit, um, and he sort of moves in, and he's sort of looking at what you're drawing very cautiously. You can see that he's um, probably nervous, I guess would be, for, for lack of a better term, if, if you can determine a, a troglodyte to be nervous like that. But um, he sort of, his hands are, are shaking a little bit as his spears, because obviously um, he sees you standing there and full in your your paladin attire and you've got, you know, Bannable standing next to you in, in his attire um, with his mace in hand. Um, and obviously these guys don't look like they've, they've seen a lot of action here recently. So it's probably a little bit of case of the nerves as he sort of looks down under and he starts beating his stick down on it um, as he, as you're putting this friendly or peaceful or whatever sort of symbol. And suddenly he starts, scratching something um, in the earth as well and you recognize it as a symbol of evil and he's like <laughs> and starts beating on it like <laughs> like well, we, he, he he's either saying he's evil or he knows where the evil is um, or he's, maybe he's warning us about evil um, so uh, you get the get the the feeling based on him looking you know he sort of looks over his shoulder and he beats on it and he's sort of looking. So you kind of get the feeling that he's telling you that you don't go any farther because it's evil or death or, or whatever you want to call it in that direction. That was a okay. good roll. I rolled a nine on my percentile dice. He understood that well. Nice. Perfect. Okay. Then um, I take like just one cautious step forward. I point at the rune he drew on the ground, and then I point to my like paladin holy symbol which I got here, mm -hmm. and I say, and then I take my hand and move in a striking motion, like splash, and I point at the thing, and it's like, and I thump my chest, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'm saying, I am here to take to vanquish the evil or fight it. Dang man, what is this? Die one hundred. That is one smart Dude, man, I'm telling you. As he sort of looks, as he sort of looks, and he's um, as as he looks at you, and he sort of cocks his head a little bit, and and you hear the other ones sort of move up behind, and they start croaking all of them in sort of unison, like, and he sort of draws these 
stick figure symbols on the on the ground um, and you get the sense that he's talking about maybe them but some of the stick figures are large and some of them are smaller and he's like <laughs> sort of scratching and sort of pointing at those figures that he drew let me see uh there is a okay. symbol for dead or death, if you want to try drawing that and asking him if that's what he means by them, that they're they're dead, meaning undead. That's an idea. But point, okay, yeah. but point specifically at the ones that don't look like him. Right. Well, they don't look like him, and then I, like, um, scratch out the symbol of... Uh, so the yeah. the symbols that he or the figures that he drew kind of look like lizard figures. Some larger lizard figures, some smaller lizard figures. Although they're basically stick figures in general, but you get the you get the sense that because they have little tails on them, etc. So you're assuming that he's drawing stick figures of himself. But there's uh -huh. some of these stick figures are larger proportion, and there's some that are really small proportion. Um, and he's sort of pointing on them. Um, and that's sort of what he was indicating. You don't get the sense that he drew of figures other than what they look like. <clears throat> he didn't. They, they're not humanoid looking. They're not human looking. They every one of them that he drew was was sort of. Uh... There is a symbol for evil watcher. Okay. And I was wondering, do you want to try and draw that and then point and ask in, in a kind of inquisitive way, are there evil watchers? Evil watchers. Yeah, watchers. Those who watch. Those who watch. Like guards. Oh, yeah, guards. Evil guards. So as yeah. you're sort of drawing this, he's like... And then he once again goes back to the, the stick figures of troglodytes that he drew. He's like... And then he smacks down on the, the symbol of evil. He's like... And then he points back to his... So you're getting the impression that something evil was is doing something. I don't know. Yeah, something evil is doing something to the their tribe. Perhaps the yeah. fingers must be their tribe. They're talking about themselves. There's um, another symbol for pet prisoner. If you want to try it, right quick. Okay, I draw the symbol for prisoner, and I walk my head inquisitively like. Uh -huh. you? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Then that uh, boy, the stick figures. Um, never mind. He, Never doesn't, mind. he doesn't appear to understand what that symbol is like. Um, but he okay. definitely understood what you were talking about about smiting of evil. He definitely, you got a reaction from him out of that. Okay, let's roll what we got, guys. Um, they know that we are here to uh, take out this evil that you know they're obviously scared of and yeah. crushed by. So. Uh, so all we need to do now is ask them to show us the way. We can get that in across okay. to them. All right. Um, go ahead and roll a percentile dice for me, um, Arthas. Either you or Bannable. Either one can roll me a percentile dice. Okay. So. Uh, so there is no there is no D one hundred here. So what I did, if you click on a D twenty or any one of the dice, uh -huh. um, it'll it'll come up with a parentheses. X, like a 1d20 just change that 20 to whatever you're trying to roll i made mine a 100 and then just hit oh, the, and then just hit the enter key and then it'll roll as a d100 1d100 okay Let's see if this works hey awesome so as you're sort of trying to convey that you're trying to get by and that um you uh you want them to sort of show you the way um they immediately turn and start to lead you back nice. out of the chamber the other well, well, well the other th three sort of disappear um or the other yeah the other three sort of disappear into here but two of them sort of lead you guys forward so all right we're in business guys yeah, all righty that's good <laughs> <laughs> it's like a toasted raider, that's what it is. What's that? Star Wars? Yeah. Uh, the Stan Crockery goes smack Luke and went, oh. Yep. So, 
you guys, um, as you pass by the Great Forge, um, sort of looking, you can see that it was an impressive forge as well. Um, one thing you notice is that off to your left over here, um, you can see where one of the guards is stationed, apparently. But it's weird that he's stationed there because it's a collapsed tunnel. Um, and so whatever was that way, looks like that tunnel collapsed. But he's still standing there as a guard for, for some reason. Um, but these guys lead you into the, uh, a chamber beyond as you guys slowly make your way, um, uh, through the, uh, uh, through the chamber. Um, you come into a chamber, um, that looks like, uh, the, the true mind nexus. Um, you can see that, let me move everybody up there. Do, do, do. I don't know why it won't let me move farther than that but it's only <laughs> it's like it only lets me move your movement i guess i don't know what the heck's going on this is really weird let me know when you Might guys is... for that. yeah there could be but i'm just going to leave you guys right here so you guys sort of move into the uh the the next chamber beyond and again it looks like it's some kind of a mind nexus of some sort um uh, uh, you can see that uh, in the center of this room, a large shaft disappears into the darkness below. A protective wall with a metal gate rings the top, and rigging overhead provides a means for raising and lowering large wooden baskets. Um, several small rocks are piled neatly <coughs> uh, are piled uh, neatly next to the wall, and you can see that uh, there are torches as well. Um, burning uh, into or, 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 or four lit torches are set in these uh, torch holders um, on the walls. Um, you can see again that there are uh, a couple of exits. Um, the one on the left uh, looks like it actually um, was just getting started so it doesn't really look like that much. However on the right uh, you can see over here it looks like it's completely collapsed. Um, in addition to this huge shaft that leads down into the, the depths below, you can see that a tunnel continues north, but it begins to slope sharply downward in that direction. The uh, troglodyte that was leading you sort of walks all the way around the other side, and he looks straight down, and he, um, he looks down the hole, and he sort of pats his chest, He's like, row, 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 and then he, he points straight down. And mm -hmm. then here, he points in that direction, and he's like, <laughs> like this really loud, obnoxious hissing sound that comes out of, that comes out of his mouth. Um, and about this time, as you guys stand there, the smell from down below begins to waft up sort of overcoming your senses and almost making your noses numb with the, the, the rankness from of it the from the shaft as well yeah. as uh, you can it's basically the troglodytes it's a con think of a concentrated spray of troglodyte smell coming up out of that below because the oh. wind is sort so coming of coming out of the shaft is troglodyte concentrate musk -like. yes that is correct <laughs> Yes, so if you guys want to capture some now and sell it to an alchemist somewhere, I'm sure you could probably make a fair coin for it. But regardless, uh, they sort of point to their chests, tap themselves on the chest, and then they point straight down. But then when they point to the tunnel up here that leads down, sharply downward into the depths below, they give this, like, nasty hissing nasty sound, sound. Like a hissing sound. What he's saying is maybe they're... The tribes are down there in the well. They're being—they're the prisoners, and whoever's keeping them captive is uh, down that uh, sloping corridor that he's giving the sounds that way. Quite possibly. That makes sense. Quite possibly. Is, yeah. is those, you mentioned that there is some rigging above the shaft. Yes. And some baskets. Do those baskets look uh, troglodyte sized or? Uh... Yeah, yeah, they look like they're—they're uh, they're large enough for a small human or a small creature, something, uh, I guess, maybe human size, because troglodytes, I mean, they're they're roughly human size. They're a little bit shorter, maybe, you know, four and a half, five feet tall, but they're in that range, right? So 
So there's a one basket looks like it could probably hold at least two of them. Um, the rigging itself looks like it's a little bit shady. Um, not sure how, how long it would hold or how well it would hold, um, but it's quite possible that's how they come up and down. And, and there and there's a gate like a, a cage surrounding that shaft. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just yeah, it's just yeah, it's just sort of this metal rigging that goes around it and stuff, sort of like a protective, so you don't like trip on the wall and fall down into the shaft. Okay. Um, because there's really stupid people that go to the Eiffel Tower and stuff like that, so they got to put bar rigging all the way around it, right? So seriously, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yep. So so yeah, that's basically what it is. You can tell that um, that rigging is or that metal work or whatever looks like it's been there for quite some time. It doesn't look like anything new, so it doesn't look like the troglodytes have been building anything. It looks like they're probably just using what may have been there. So this troglodyte's pointing down that hallway that slopes down, right? That is north. correct. Yeah, making the nasty noises. That is correct. I think that's where our objective is. I think that's where the way we where we should go, yeah. Yeah. All right. I will advance. So, you guys are heading down the tunnel. You begin to work your way into the tunnel. You can see that it is a rough-hewn, semi-worked stone that begins, and slowly it begins to descend. It the, the slope is to the point where you guys sometimes actually have to put your hands on the wall to sort of steady yourselves, not because it's so steep, but because of the moisture and the, um, the years of water seeping through from the swamps above, making it here and giving the floor sort of a, a muddy type of a, a consistency to it as you slowly shuffle your way down. You descend perhaps 20 feet or so when you find what was apparently the next level of the mines, and it has been collapsed. Um, right. Anybody here? Um, yeah, we don't have any dwarves, um, so you wouldn't really know about the stonework itself. But just for game purposes, from the looks of it, it looks like it was purposefully collapsed as if somebody was trying to block something um, from either coming up or coming out or getting into the mines, one or the other. And so you're forced to continue downward. And you continue downward for perhaps another 10, 15 feet as this tunnel sort of slowly winds its way down. It's almost as if you're walking down a spiral staircase, but it's a slippery sort of a slide um, on your way um, into the depths of the earth as the oppressiveness begins to sort of weigh upon you at how deep you are uh, under the earth. As you reach another level, you can see that this third level has been collapsed and apparently it's been collapsed on purpose as well. In this particular one, you see a skeletal hand sticking out from the stone and you can see that um, it's small, so it's apparently dwarf-sized. Um, perhaps one of the people doing the collapsing got caught under the rubble however many centuries ago or decades ago or however long ago that was. But once again, you find yourselves having to continue downward. It's almost as if sound begins to not even echo as you guys shuffle your way down and eventually you find yourselves um, eventually you guys find yourselves at the bottom of the uh, of the shaft or not the shaft but the uh, why is it not moving okay this is getting annoying why is this not letting me move anybody I don't get it I'm baffled here we go. Let's move him. Here we go. This is this is absolutely funny. Okay. Um, and I'm going to put Valdron up front because he was there. So you guys find yourselves on a ledge, overlooking what used to be 
a lower level of was probably a mines of some sort. The stone and on the shelf, the, the, where you guys are, it's sort of a staggered stone, muddy shelf leading down to the floor of the chamber. But the floor of the chamber itself now appears to be completely flooded um, with water. You can see a pond-like scum um, layer across this, and it is it ripples ever so slightly with perhaps a slight breeze, perhaps the motion of your bodies causing um, slight tremors on the stone, giving it this ever so slight ripple. Um, it is dead quiet and dead silent in here as you guys overlook um, the, the lowest level of the mines. Um, you can't really see very far because right here, there is this huge stone edifice that rises off the floor all the way to the ceiling, blocking your view, um, blocking your view from from anywhere. Um, like I said, you see this sort of scummy layer um, across the top of this water as if perhaps it has not been disturbed in a very, very long time. So we can't see... Uh... Uh, like through the water, I guess. That is correct. The water. So, so the tunnel opens into a huge vaulted water filled cavern from where you stand. The three sandy shelves slope down into the chamber. The total drop being almost 20 feet from the tunnel where, um, Bannable and, um, Aster are all standing down to where Valdrin is standing. It's almost literally a, a 20 foot drop. Stalactites and stalagmites are visible everywhere with one huge column of rock stretching from floor to ceiling on your right. You can see tunnels leading off of this chamber in the distance. Um, although it's, it's extremely difficult to see because your light doesn't penetrate that far. Um, but you can tell that there are exits in the distance as these big, huge black dots sort of loom um, in the darkness beyond. So is the water like at our feet there or, or is there a drop? To so the water? there. So where Valdrin is standing, there's a, and another shelf goes down a little bit that goes into the water. So it's, okay. it's sort of lapping right at that last ledge right there. Two bits of suggestion, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Uh, first, who has the uh, collapsible ten foot pole? I have one of those. I have, I have a ten foot pole. Yeah. Would you mind sticking it out uh, over the the area with the stalagmites and stalactites? As in, yeah. what do you mean? Yeah. What do yeah. we do? I, I can I can stick my uh, I'll stick my ten foot pole out. Okay. Over the over the surface of the water, you're kind of talking. Just see, you, if, just see if anything falls uh, down or crashes upward. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so so to just sort I'm of just piercers kind of, and ropers. Gotcha. Basically. Just sort of sort of waving yeah. it over here, waving it over here, waving it over here to see if yeah. anything drops. Okay. Yeah. So um, you spend a couple of minutes sort of waving this ten foot pole over the top of the water, but yeah, nothing nothing happens. And the other thing is, can he reach the top of the water? Uh. Uh, what do you mean? Like, uh, is there any way without going all the way down that you can take the 10-foot pole and put it at the top of the water? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because from where you're standing, it's probably another another five-foot drop to the to uh -huh. the next ledge down, right? So, But it, it, it just sort of all slopes into one big, huge slope, right? It's three yeah. three sort of shelves, but it's really one big thing. You, you have to kind of jump down each shelf to get there. Um, but, yeah, from where you're standing – to the to the top of the water is maybe about four feet or so so absolutely you can probe the water and uh see what happens and then examine the tip of the pole okay so Carefully. you put your pole down and it goes into the water and it sinks down down dunk, dunk. the water here at the shelf at least where you first step off the shelf is probably about three feet deep okay Nothing attacks the pole or otherwise reacts. That is correct. And if I examine the tip of the pole, if I pull it out, what do I see? Like, is there anything? It's muck. Yeah, it looks like it hit a sandy bottom or a muddy bottom and stuff. So slime, typical slime you might find in a riverbed of some kind. Okay, cool. So what, what if I try to grab a uh, stone or a rock from the from the floor and uh, 
toss it in the water about, let's say, 15, 20 feet ahead. What, what do you guys think about that? Good idea. All right, let's, let's give it a go. All right, so you find a relatively nice-sized chunk of stone. Yeah, something like a softball or something. Okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's kind of double-click on the map where you want to toss it. How 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 tall is the inside area? Roughly about twenty feet tall. You can see the the ceiling overhead probably goes up, yeah, fifteen maybe twenty feet tops. So is it possible to climb the walls without having actually touching the water? Uh, it is rough hewn. Um, so it is quite possible for you to sort of climb along the wall. It would be pretty arduous, so you'd have to do a check. But by the way, I should say these squares are now down to five foot squares. So this is five foot maps now, right? So, um, okay. so you would probably have to check at least every ten feet. Do another check of uh, um, your climbing skill to make sure you don't slip and fall down into the water. But it is quite possible. So, you. Uh, you see where I double click there, Sean? I did. Okay. So right. That's. Apparently, okay. Uh, not apparently. Approximately. Okay. Yep. Um, so you you toss this in the water and it kaplunk and you you hear this little sp like a, a muffled sploosh as it sinks down and you watch as the ripples sort of um, work their way across the water and everything starts to calm out and suddenly you see the ripples appear once again as suddenly you see several creatures sort of rise up out of the water. You hear a hissing sound as you see several undead-like creatures making their way towards you. I would like everyone to state their actions. We're going to combat, boys. All right. Let's just start at the top of the order. Arthaeus? Turn undead, of course. Arthaeus is going to turn undead. Aster? Uh, I believe, because I'm concentrating on the spell, I cannot take an action. However, it may harm these creatures as they believe I am launching magic missiles at them. Okay. I don't know how that works. Because I'm I'm still holding on the uh, I'm still holding on to the uh, Phantasmal Force because, yep. although I can or the improved like version of it. Yep. Um, like we talked about at the end of the campaign. In his last session, so uh, I don't know how that works. Uh, okay. Master, so I'm yep. Need a link from you nope. On how that works. That's totally fine. It would be a phantasmal force that whoever you launch the missiles at is going to have to make a, uh, a wisdom saving throw um, to see whether or not they they believe that, and then if they fail to okay. believe, then you would do magic missile damage to them. So. Sure. 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 So, all right. So. Um, I didn't number these, so that's that's fine. So, um, that's uh, so I'm basically. Gonna be, I'm going to be summoning monsters. Okay. Um, so you're doing that, Bannable. Troy, you with us? I'm going to hold. Okay. I'm going to check my inside. turn for now. Okay. All right. Uh, Valdrin. Holding. Okay. And Valorius? I'm going to uh, knock a, a silver-tipped arrow uh, and have it at the ready. Okay. And, All right. And I, should, I, I should clarify that if I'm going to attack something, it's only going to be after it hasn't been turned. Okay. Like if it's charging towards us. Like, nope, that's fine. Sort of we'll, uh, we'll, okay. we'll figure that out. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, I need – Let's. we're just going to start with the top of the order. Atheus, I need you to roll a six-sided dice for initiative for me, please. One six nine are coming right up. All right, so you guys win initiative. So uh, we're gonna go right, uh, right down the order. Arthas, go ahead, and you're doing your turning. So what is your turn skill for, um, for ghouls? Ghouls. Um... You have to get a four or better. I need you to roll a twenty sided to turn. Yeah. Coming right up. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Now I do believe, isn't it two to two to twelve? Uh, is how one many? To 12. One to twelve. So I need you to roll a twelve-sided dice for me to see how many of these ghouls are actually turned. 
five. So we're just going to take one. I'm going to move them way out of the way. Two, three, four, five. All right, and I'm just going to hide these guys if you'll give me my time to get it on the map here. All right, so those ghouls are turned. Um, so as you kind of stand there and they start moving towards you, Arthaeus moves up, um, holding his holy symbol and calling out prayers to Heronius, driving back the beasts. And you watch as your symbol sort of lights up with the glow of Heronius and they sort of catches uh, those five and they immediately turn and begin to rumble off, um, trying yes. their best to get away from you. Um, and how turning is for a turn, right? Am I, am I correct on that? What's the uh, length of time for a turn? Uh, I think so. Isn't that why they last, call it turning? Last three to twelve. Three to twelve. Three to twelve. All right. So go ahead and roll. Go ahead and roll three d four for me, please. All right. Three d four. So, geez, how do I change? Oh, I see. Um, yep. Three. Somebody attacks them, then it breaks the turn. Right. Ten. All right. So ten. Right. Ten rounds. Or is that turns? Is it 10, 10, ten turns? Ten turns. That's over 10 an round. hour. Yeah, it's 10 rounds, right? Rounds. Yeah, yep. that's what I thought. Rounds? Oh, man. Okay. We don't have to worry right. about them. All right, so we're in round one now, so I just want to keep notes on my here. All right, so once again, Arthea sort of turns these, and not all of them seem to be affected, but at least half of them or close to half of them suddenly turn and, and begin to flee away from the from the sickening light as they sort of wave their hands out to you going hissing. Arr! And hmm. moving out of the way. Uh, anything else you want to do? You want to chase them down and try to swat them with your swat them with a sword, but or at least draw your weapon and attack. Or are you gonna stay where you are? Was this the next round? No, it's not. This is still this round. I'm just saying. Oh, are you okay. gonna try to chase after them? You still have movement. You can, you know, if you wanted to move or, or something like that in here. Yeah, move to the front, but I'm not gonna yeah. like move up and separate <laughs> myself from the party members. Gotcha. Duh. All right, Aster, you said you were just sort of holding. Um, you see that um, several of these these undead creatures manage to mm. um, be pushed away, but there are still several others that are that are heading your direction. Okay, so I I, I have to use I'm using my action to maintain this thing. I guess it's just going to attack the nearest one. I, I would suppose. Uh, what's the range on the, the magic missile? Is it so or on, uh, yeah, on, on magic missile or phantasmal force? Well, phantasmal force, I should say. Yeah. All right. Um, um, I believe, uh, sorry, that's 80, that's second edition, hold up. That's fine, it's close enough. All right, well, that's a 60 yards. 60 yards, all right, so in underground, sure. it's a 60, so let's yeah, even if we want with 60 feet, to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, yep, so he, this one here is within, this one with over here is within range, if you, uh, if you wanted to attack it, um, this sure. this creature up here would be within range if you wanted to. The rest of them look to be out of range. <clears throat> so okay. which one uh, do you want to go after? Uh, you you kind of I'm gonna say uh, probably this one right here is more. I don't okay. Know if it's anything. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Go ahead and roll your roll your attack. Oh, it's actually a, a wisdom save on it, isn't it? And yeah. They have to do yeah, wisdom I'll save. Okay. I'll go ahead and roll the dice uh, for the damage, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna do their uh, do his save. Sixteen minus one, fifteen. Um, so the uh, the whatever you're trying to do, this mm -hmm. ghoul just sort of looks at you, and is yeah. just sort of. Argh. Actually, you know what? I I think I don't think that's right. Man, I am unprepared today because I didn't have my monster manual. <laughs> or I didn't have my uh, my DMG open. I was so getting everything ready, and I completely forgot to open up my book. So let me open up the. Uh, anybody have their uh, the uh, DMG open? I need the 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 monster hit die saves. It's a save based on hit dice. 
You know what page it's on, approximately? No, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm pretty sure that a 16 would have saved anyway. So I'm just going to say that this uh, sure. two hit die monster saved. I'll look at my DMs. What's that? I'll see if it's on my DMs. Screen. Yeah, yeah, that's I what I was going to say. Yep. So if a, mo a monster f does it as a, a fighter of the same level, if I'm not mistaken, so. Yeah, uh, monster save as fighters. Yep, so it's a fighter a HD or a, a, a second level fighter. What's his save versus spells? Second, second level would be, hang on a bit. Second level fighter versus spells would be a 17. 17, so he failed. All right, so he took. So uh, suddenly you watch as this uh, as this ghoul just sort of um, looks and is it sort of throws its arms up as if it's trying to block something, and then it just sort of collapses into the water um, as he dies of, for lack of a better term, psychic damage of being blasted away by a by a uh, non-existent. Um, bolt of, of magic coming blasting out of this little white orb that Aster has, has managed to uh, conjure up. So, um, yes, he fails uh, that that particular. So, all right. Anything else? I think that's all I can do on my turn. Mike. Yep. Vanable, anything that you want to do? We'll attempt to turn the rest. Okay. Um, as move Vanable up front. Go ahead, and uh, your turn is automatic, though, right? You don't do damnation, do you, on a, on ghouls yet? I think it's just automatic turn. Yeah, automatic turn. All right, so I just need to know how many. So go ahead and do your... Uh, how do you want to do that? Because I'm not sure. So automatic automatic turn, it's still only 1 to 12, right? It doesn't, it doesn't do all of them? Correct me if I mean that. Uh, so many hit dice going from the lowest hit dice monsters, if there's a mix, if they're all the same, then... Right, so they are not. Yeah, them. they are not. So we have one, two, three, four ghouls and two ghasts left. So this creature here that I've highlighted is a ghast, and then there's a ghast up here as well. Ooh, um, two, three, four of these are actually ghouls. So you would do the ghouls first. Yep. So it would still be a 1d12, right, uh, to, to see how many are automatically turned without having to roll? Yep, going to do that right now. All right, so the rest of them join their brethren. And I, nicely done. All right, <clears throat> so all that remains is the ghasts. So I don't think you, you only you only get the one turn against them, right? Then you would have to turn. You could turn the ghasts next round, right? Is that correct? Correct. Or you can't do them both. Yeah, okay. Just want to make sure. All right, cool. All right, Brodus, Brodus Firepalm, you are up, my friend. All right. Anything that well. you want to – you can see them, albeit it's very dark and difficult um, well, actually, you can't quite see this one, but you can see this one. So you can't see the one that's because your view is blocked by this huge rock formation. So he hasn't right, come into view yet. Pretty much. There's still a problem. They just turned. Yeah, they just they've moved away. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'll finish casting my spell. OK. Uh, I'm going to summon, I guess it's two to eight level one monsters. Okay. Which, uh, there is a list somewhere in there. Well, there's not a list in the spells, and I was looking, trying to find it. The only list I could find was like a random dungeon encounter for level one. Right. Monsters. If you want me to use that, I'm not sure. Nope, that's fine. Yeah. So what are we, what are we trying to... That's on page 175. Unless you want, I mean, it's your discretion what I can summon, so. I mean. Right. So, I mean, I'm trying to think of what would be something down here. Wait, 175 of what, the DMG or? Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Uh, 
me look at that really quick just so we can see. I thought there was something in one of the in the DMG or in the player's guide or something like that that mm -hmm. that had it in there. I wasn't able to find it. All I was able to find was yeah, the, uh, the monster manual too. Yep. So. so so down here, I would say that you would probably um, be able to summon up um, uh, probably giant ants or fire beetles. One of those two. Um, you would be able to to summon down here in a dungeon would make sense, right? Is so there's probably some giant ants running around down here or some fire be beetles uh, running around here. So let's just go with that. Let's just go with fire beetles. That'd probably be a be an yeah, interesting right. one, an interesting one to to sort of summon up. Okay, so do I do? It says two to eight. Yep. So, so you I... just roll two die four, and that's how many of these fire beetles will 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 come to your aid. Nice seven. seven. So Whoa. you you watch as suddenly scurrying from above as Brodus gets up and he, he finishes his incantation. Um, you wait just ever so slightly and suddenly you can see this reddish sort of glow sort of coming out of some of the fissures and in, in cracks in the rocks and stuff as you watch these rather large beetles with these big huge red sort of tails um, lighting up the, the chamber area. All of them appear over in this area by this one as they come out from this side um, but you watch them all sort of descend around um, now that being said these creatures now work uh, fight for you am I correct mm -hmm. all right yes so let me let's see if I can find it here they don't have fire beetles in here of course not Oh, there they are. So, they yep, they are a they are a one hit die, one plus two hit die monster. So, um, each one of them is gonna have, I'm just gonna say, um, six hit points, mm -hmm. um, and their armor class is four. So they're actually kind of tough to hit, and that's how many are gonna be there fighting for you now when they do, when they do their damage, uh, delivering serious damage. Pardon me, highly. Just looking to see how much damage they do when they attack. Damage per attack, two to eight hit points of damage from their mandible attack. So, that being said, you now have seven fire beetles sort of swarming down on top of this ghoul, or this ghast, I should say. I need you to roll. I believe they, I believe they illuminate the area, too. Yes, yeah, so that's what I was saying. They sort of light up this whole area as you watch it in sort of this... Um, kind of a, a, a reddish glow um, sort of illuminates this whole area as these several of these um, fire beetles come out of the fissures and they um, swoop down to attack. So I'm going to need you to run their attacks. I need seven, seven D20 attacks. Um, and what is the to hit armor I class say, four? What's uh, that? Four. For yeah. the fake bill for number one, yep, it's a uh, nineteen. Nineteen. All right, so they're gonna need that's a nineteen to hit armor class zero or armor class four. Yes, armor class zero. So all right, so, fifteen. All right, so armor. Yeah, they'll need a fifteen in order to hit. So I'm just gonna need you to roll seven attacks. Now on astral, if I hit all seven, it'll total it, right? Or yeah, you'd have, have you'd have. Well, if you want, you can you can roll all once and then you, it'll show you the breakdown of each one when you mouse over it. It'll show you how many okay. I want the dice yeah, is. So. All right, here we go. Come on, criticals. <laughs> all right. So... Oh, my God. Three fumbles. Yep, three fumbles. <laughs> and uh, one oh hit. Oh, my God. So... Out of all of these, one of the beetles, I'm not going to do fumbles on the creatures. Uh, out of all of these, only one of the beetles actually strikes and manages to clamp its mandibles into the ghast. And it sort of lets out a hissing sound um, as it pierces into its flesh and sort of rips some of its arm off uh, right about the shoulder. You watch this flesh sort of come flying off as the beetle um, pier uh, pincers onto it. Um, go ahead and roll the damage two to eight, please. Six hit points. Six hit points of damage to... All right. Awesome. Let me get my notes back. All right. Round one. Six to the ghast. 
All right. So that's that's uh, Brodus's go. Valdrin. Holding. Holding still. All right, Valorius. Gonna am, am I, wade into are, the water I, to attack. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> am I am I in range with my bow? Yes, you are. You can uh, you can you can actually see now because this particular ghast over there in the niche is um, is lit up by several of these fire beetles that have uh, appeared out of the cracks and fissures of the of the the uh, walls. Okay, I will uh, let loose an arrow then. Okay. Fifteen to hit. It's a uh, as you, uh, yep, you hit, and your damage is two to that same ghast. Oh, so I just gotta click on the bow and it does it all automatically. Yep, it does. No way. Yeah, I put. Well, you have to build it into it, right? So Astral allows you to build. And what I did is I put all your character sheets in here, and then I built out all your normal attacks. Right, so okay. if there are any additional bonuses or anything like that other than your normal bonuses, it doesn't have that in there. Like if I gave you a plus four to hit somebody from behind, you would have to mm -hmm. manually add that plus four after the roll. You would say, oh, it's not a 15, it's a 19 or whatever, right? In this case, um, you did, your bow was your plus uh, 1d20 plus one, and then your damage is a d6 against the creature, right? So right, um, right. so that was the, the, the hit and the damage, so. And then if, oh. if, if there's, like I said, if there's a bonus that I'm missing, you just have to mouse over it and it'll show you what, what all was given. Um, I just need to know, hey, Sean, you messed up and I need to correct the script on there or whatever we need to do. So, yeah. But, yeah, it's all it's all automatic. The same thing with your saving throw. It just rolls a d20 for a save, et cetera, et cetera. Hmm. Right. So, yeah. yep, it's all built in. All right, so you manage you manage to hit this creature, and uh, the arrow sort of buries into it, and you watch it sort of scream in pain as the silver sort of hits it, and it grabs a hold of the, your arrow, and it snatches it out, and it smashes it against the wall, and it begins charging after you guys. So it is now their attack. Now you have a... Oh, never mind, the protection of evil doesn't work against... Hey, what? Doesn't say it'll keep a ghoul at bay? No, it's uh, nope. It's uh, not undead. It's other uh, other planar creatures. You know, demons, devils, things like that. They um, they don't necessarily. Uh, they can't get within like ten feet of you. Um, and when they do, it's like it's a disadvantage or something like that on your attack, right? So or on on their attack. So yeah, if you look up protection from from evil. Um, yeah, I guess it just gives me a bonus for uh, a bonus to my armor class, and I think and damage. I'm gonna look this up. Okay. Do, 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 do. Let's go ahead and look Be it up real quick. Just, all right. just so you all know. Right. Looking it up now. EQR. Where are you? Oh, here we go. When this spell of Thomas Cass, I think we're Enchanter, conjured nature, summoned animals, <laughs> monsters. Uh, okay, so we can agree that uh, they can hit me. Yeah, they can uh, hit you, it, but that's a minus two on their attack, and you get a plus two on your attack. That's correct. Yep. And or you, minus two on to hit. Yeah. Hit me, and any saving throw is caused by my attacks. My plus two on the protected creature's dice. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So yeah, like I said, they can they can attack you. Um, but their attacks are at my, and again, that's yours is in a 10 foot radius as well. So right now, same thing with the attack on, on Bannable and attack on you, they're at minus two for their attacks. So the ghast reaches out with his claws and actually ghast get multi-attack too, if I'm not correction. Yep. They get three attacks, claw, claw, bite. Um, and just want to make sure I am where I'm at. All right. So. First ghast attacks, attacks, attacks. Nah, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do one at a time. So his claw attack. Ooh, as he strikes with a 19 minus two is a 17. What is your armor class? Negative two. Negative two. Uh, crud. What's the? I really hate being unprepared. I'm really sorry, guys. This is really annoying. No, 
Where is I'm looking at it now? Here, yep. attack matrix to monsters. Yep, monster, hit yeah. die two. Hit die two, armor class negative two is 18. 18, and he misses okay. because he hit a 19, yeah. but it's at a minus two, so it's a 17. So, first claw. So you said he needs a what to hit you, a 17? Oh, well, for me it needs an 18. Two, three plus is 18 for negative two. Okay. Wait, no, it's only... Uh... Oh, I take it back. They're a hit die four. I was thinking hit die two. Gas or hit die four. Oh, crap. Never mind that he hit. He did hit? <laughs> All right. Yeah, he's saying, ah, you missed me. Either. Oh, wait. Oh. So really quick, though, what, is, what does he need to, what does a hit die four need to hit armor class negative two? Or hit, hit armor class zero? Hit armor class zero? That would just subtract two from that. You get a 15 to hit armor class zero. Right, 15 to hit armor I just want to make sure. So for you, he needs to get a 17. But at a minus two, he needs to get it. But regardless, it needs to be 17 total after the plus is the minus. Okay. Mm -hmm. So his second claw attack is a miss. Third uh, bite attack, 14 is 12 is a miss. So one of his claws reaches out to, uh, to rake across you, and it just manages to scratch you across the face uh, for four hit points of damage. And I need you to roll a paralyzation saving throw. Of course, you get a plus two. Okay, hang on it. This is not one roll I want to uh, <laughs> bungle. Okay, here we go. He said, um, well, D20 and add two. Yep. I don't even know how you do that. Well, if I just roll the D20 and it will add all your bonuses on there to it. Okay. So you need to get a nine or better for, for your save. Let's roll your d20. Woo! Yes. Yeah, so if you want to know how to... Hell on, let's save. Yeah, if you actually right. want to know how to do that, put the plus two inside the parentheses. Oh, so okay. it's 1d20 plus two, and then it would it would show up. So you ended up with a 19. Awesome. All right, so you can feel as your face sort of tingles and tightens as the unholy energy sort of tries to seep its way into your skin, but fortunately, Heronius is strong within you as you press off... Uh, the the unholy attack and it does not it does not paralyze you as the second ghast comes up um, uh, to uh, and uh, just as it sort of arrives all of you guys can start feeling the stench of this thing sort of overpowering smell coming off of the ghast as now um, once it's your turn you're gonna have to save versus uh, um, poison otherwise you'll be at a minus two to fight which kind of balances off your protection so it's a straight up fight as opposed to um, adding anything so first attack claw attack 18 as he strikes bannable second claw attack 19 two claw attacks as his bite attack is a natural one <laughs> as he fails so two claws attack as Bannable suffers five hit points of, of damage, I need you to roll a paralyzation saving throw, please, sir. Um, and, well, first of all, um, go ahead and roll a saving throw versus poison. All right. Um, and I believe that successfully for you on your, on your character sheet. Uh, poison... Oh, nope. you failed. Yeah. So you are now you have to you will be fighting at a minus two and but basically it's you get a plus two because of the protection for your saving throws. So you're sort of even out your saving throw for paralyzation now. So you failed the poison, but I need you to roll a paralyzation now to, to save being paralyzed by the ghoul. Fifteen as you manage to save, and I'm only going to do one save for both attacks because it's I don't like to do that every time they hit. Although that's roll a one. Yeah, although although it was a uh, a uh, by the rules I should be have you make two saves, but I'm only doing the one save uh, if they do multiple hits. So that being said, you also manage to sort of shrug off as Polor sort of rises up in you. Um, pushing off the, the negative energy that um, comes in. And just as it does, uh, fortunately, it sort of slams back um, into the ghoul as you throw your arm up um, in the way and manage to throw off its bite attack as it misses badly um, on, its, on its bite attack on you. Um, but uh, fortunately, um, yeah, everybody is, is safe uh, after that particular attack. So 
back to the top of the order. Um, first of all, we need to, um, what are we doing? Um, Arthaeus? Hmm. I counterattack with my sword. Okay, Arthaeus, Aster, what's, what actions? I will be continuing to use these illusory magic missiles on these things. Okay. All right. Uh, Banable? Are they? Does whole person work on them? No. 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 Um, you can no. turn these, though. You have the option to turn these because these are different creatures than the ghouls were. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Um, Brodus? I am going to continue commanding my things and throw darts if I can do all that. <laughs> um, so, yes, um, uh, because they sort of have their free will, it's not like a concentration spell, um, as you just direct them to attack the ghast, um, and then you can then throw your darts. Yes, I'll allow that. Valdrin, just going to hang out still? If, well, can I do an either or? Uh, okay, let's hear it. Okay, if ba if uh, Banable succeeds, okay. I'm going to hold. Okay. If he doesn't succeed in turning, I'm going to run down and attack the uh, gas that's on him. Okay. Uh, yeah, you could probably squeeze around there to, to kind of get down there. I'll allow that. Okay. And last but not least, Valorius. Um, I'm going to do much the same that, that Valdrum did. I'm going to pull out my, uh, flame tongue sword, which is a plus four to undead. Yes. So I am, I'm going to be at the ready, uh, to, uh, also attack okay. if, uh, if the turn is not, um, not okay. successful. All right. So first up then is, um, uh, Arthaeus. Arthaeus, uh, go ahead and roll your attack, your long sword attack. Really, all I have to do is click. There you go. 1d20 plus 1, right? Because you get a plus um, 1 to hit. I have a plus 1 long sword. Right, that's what the plus 1 is for. Um, yeah. You don't get any other bonuses beside that plus 1 long sword, right? Like your strength um, isn't high enough or anything like that, right? I wish, but no. Yeah. All right, um, so you roll a 10 to hit. So what is your Thacko? Thacko for fourth level paladin is eighteen. Eighteen. So you need a fourteen to hit this as your long sword misses as the yeah. as the gas sort of ah, as you watch as your blade sort of rakes rakes across its flesh doesn't appear to damage it whatsoever as it just sort of grins at you and smathers or uh, his lips are sort of smacking together and his tongue sort of licking out as he's anticipating feasting upon you at the earliest opportunity. Aster, which uh, which Gast, are you uh, attempting to? Uh, this one, the, the one that was just attacked with the longsword. Okay. All right. Um, as he sort of looks at you, as he sort of watches as this thing starts coming at him, and then he just, it, he watches as it hits him, and then he realizes it did no damage, and he, now he smiles he even wider as, uh, as he saved, oh. as he saved versus the, uh, versus the spell. And now he is no longer affected by it at all, so he would not be able um, to. Just do. Okay. Uh, Bannable, go ahead and do your, your turn for gas. I know you have to roll for that, so it's not an automatic. Yep, I need a seven. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, As you go man. to turn, and the, and the gas, they sort of, yeah, they hiss. And now that they've, they realize that you are a follower of the Holy One, they are now intent upon destroying whatever goodness is flowing through you as you try to banish them, and it fails as this gas moves up because now they're both going to be wanting a piece of you. All right, Brodus. So the um, you watch as the... Um, the uh, fire beetles sort of work their way and they sort of working their way around. And they come all the way around. So where do you want them to attack? Do you want them to attack this one or this one? Because they're not in the water. They actually scamper around the rocks. You can crawl up to the ceiling and jump off and dive bomb them. <laughs> yeah, we could do that too. So which which ones you want them to do both of them or just all of them on one or what do you want to do? Do these beetles fly? 
No. Oh. Only when you kick up. <laughs> so which one do you want him to attack? Me? Yeah, you're up. Oh, okay. Um, um, I'm going to have them. Well, I'm going to throw the dart at the one that was hitting uh, the cleric. Okay. And, you know, mentally, you know, they're supposed to attack when I, you know, attack again. So okay. Yeah, so they're all going to attack all... that same one? Okay. All yes. right. So yes. if you want to go ahead and do your seven, seven beastlies. Okay. Okay. Something happened to my tabletop. Dun, dun, dun. Refresh. That's what I always have to do. Okay. There we go. All right. 20 or 7 of them. Okay. Hopefully better luck this time. <laughs> Ooh, 69. All right. So you have a Lucky crit. Number. So you have two hits. You have two <laughs> hits. One of them is a crit. So go ahead and roll... Two, four, six D four damage, please. No, sorry, they do two to eight. Sorry, so six, yeah, six D four. So two to eight. So that's one hits. Two to uh, two D four. Two hits is two D four. So total of five hit points damage. All right, well you did it. You did it twice. That's all right. Yeah, one of them was the only one. Yeah, two D eight. All right, so one did five, so double that is ten. So he's a he's a critical. I just do the double damage. I'm not even gonna worry about rolling again. So you did a total of fifteen hit points of damage, as 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 these as they dive bomb on top of this gas and they just bury themselves into it and they start ripping at his flesh and you watch one of them just sort of bury itself as a gas sort of uh, op uh, its mouth opens wide into this hissing sort of pain as you watch as one of the fire beetles crawls down his throat and it, it, you literally watch him almost explode from the inside um, as the, uh, the gas falls under the water dead death by dive bombing fire fire beetles and, <laughs> and you're you're you don't even get a chance as your darts go flashing past you watch them go they strike the at the ghoul as it's sinking in the water with these seven uh um fire beetles clinging to it ripping its flesh apart um continuing to rip at the shreds underneath the water all right all right i like it nice nicely done that was actually a uh oops all right much. all right yeah. valdrin Holding. Uh, holding. Guys, still. a little help over here. All right, Valorius, as you step, you want to step into the water, or you're going to try to do what in order to get to that gas? Because right now, Arthas is between you and it. Uh, I will try and get to that gas. All right. So you find yourself wading into the water. You feel that the 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 water is is cool as it sort of starts seeping into your breeches, and you feel the sort of the the slick under uh, uh, or the ground underneath is sort of a muddy, um, I don't know, sort of a, like sand and stuff all mixed up and with, with uh, about two, three inches deep, and you can feel it sort of seeping into your boots. Um, but it's not really slippery to the point where you're slipping and sliding, right? But it is um, rather slick just because of the water, mud, and sand underneath. However, you find yourself getting a perfect angle to attack the gas. Go ahead and roll your attack. Ugh. All right. As you manage to swing, just as you were thinking this is easy, your foot sort of slides and you almost do a splits as your blade goes crashing down behind the gas, striking the, the earth underneath it, um, the flame sort of lighting up underneath it. And underneath you can see little bits of bone and chunk of, of material sort of floating in the water and laying a, along the bottom of the water um, as the, the flame tongue sort of illuminates up, up underneath. Even in this brackishness, you can see um, the remains of, of creatures long dead um, still underneath the water as you pull back your sword um, sort of in half embarrassment at such a wild miss at an easy target. All right. I'm very embarrassed. Yes. I feel, feel shame. As the as the ghast, undeterred by the the slaying from the fire beetles of his partner, lashes out three attacks and a bite, all at the 
unholy holy man who dared to try to turn it. Uh -oh. 13. Uh, what's your armor class again? Let me double check. Your armor class is... Fine. Uh, no, uh, Bannable's armor class 7. All right. What does a uh, fourth level fighter need to hit armor class 7? Somebody for me, please. Um, fourth level fighter armor class 7? Yep. Hang on, then. As the bite misses uh -huh. again. I just 11. want to check. 11. 11. So two 11. hits. Two hits on Bannable. So once again, he suffers five hit points as these claws rake across you and you feel the chilling cold of the, uh, the negative energy as it sort of hits your bones, causing a shock to run through your body as paralysis begins to set in. I need a saving throw versus paralysis. And since you're at a minus two, but you get a plus two because of the... Um, uh, because of the paladin standing next to you, it's at a straight up roll. So a nine or better. You with us, Troy? Yeah. Yep. What's up? I just need you to roll a saving throw versus paralysis as once again the, the gas has raked its claws across you. 13, once again, Pelor comes to the rescue. He may not have been helping you turn it, but at least he's keeping this unholy energy at bay as it fails to... Um, as it, where is it? I want to keep it on here. As he took another five hit points of damage, so you, you're, uh, you're down to 26, I believe. All right. Back to Arthas. What's your action? Once again um, with the blade. Press the attack. Okay. Hope I get lucky. All right, Aster. Um, this is the one that is immune to your. Uh, to your no, I take it back. The other one was immune. This one was not immune. All right, cool. That's that's what I was worried about. Is like <laughs> do nope. nothing or drop the spell. Uh, no, like wait, no, nope, I no, nope. I take that back. The one that died was the one that did because he was the one that was right in front of Bannable. So he's the one that actually made the, uh, or this is the one that made the save last time. So he was, he's oh, still the same one. All right. So. all right. All right. So I suppose this will depend very highly upon how much faith I have that my allies can remove him without suffering much more in the way of injury. Okay. I'm not very experienced with one. So it's hard for me to judge, but as a fifth level character, how yep. would I feel about that? Uh, based on how the other one went down. Don't know. Um, you saw hmm. that the other one went down pretty quickly underneath fire beetles. Um, yeah. so yeah. that's a thing. We do still have a swarm of, are the fire wheels still active? Um, they are, but they're okay. still munching on the, uh, the thing below. Oops. They have to oh, wait no. for Brodus to attack. Whenever Brodus attacks, then they will attack. So if Brodus attacks this other right. gas. Okay. If we're like 12 you running this guy, I'm going to can try to conserve this spell. And if anyone takes too much damage, I still have a healing potion to help. Okay. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm going to maintain my concentration on the spell. I know it's not going to affect him, but, uh, It'll be helpful against further enemies, so I'm going to keep it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see. All right. So, uh, Bannable, anything that uh, that you're up for other than, I mean, you already tried the turn, so you can't turn again, but any other attacks that you want or anything else? Am, I, am I within range of the other one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right there. You're right there in front of yeah, me. Yeah, I'll, I'll swing my mace at him. Okay. All right, uh, Brodus, what is your action? I will continue to attack the other ghoul, our guest. Okay. With my beetles and darts. Okay. Valdrin, still holding? Rush the other. I'm going to run. The, if, I can, if I can, I'm going to go ahead and go after the other guest as well. So how are we going to do that? Just with your arrow? Uh, we don't have an arrow. Uh, I wasn't sure what weapons you had, sorry. Yeah, I've got longsword and dagger, and I can't make it over there, can I? Uh, it would. I mean, you can, but you would have to go around Brodus and Bannable and then get into the water next to it. And I'll hold. <laughs> okay. Valorius, you're still going after with your blade, right? <clears throat> Valorius. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so um, let's go to um, Arthaeus then. Go ahead and roll your attack. All right. 
Um, big money. Oh, big money misses. As your long yeah, sword once again. What's that? Maybe I'm better off just rolling a straight D20. I don't trust this uh, L button you got there. That's <laughs> twice in a row I got lousy hits. Hey, man, I'm just trying to help you out. I told you guys, you don't have to use that. If you want to roll the dice on the bottom of the thing, you totally can. Just make sure to add and to take away any bonuses that you got. All right, so you got a 7 uh, plus or 6 plus 1. Nope, absolutely misses. All right. Aster, uh, you're just going to continue concentrating. Bannable, go ahead and roll your attack uh, against armor class 4. Oh, yeah. Nicely done. Natural 20. I, I just needed to show him how to do it. Max, you know, yeah. max <laughs> damage. As you walk up and in the name of Pelor, you raise your mace up and you bring it down on top of the gas and it throws its hands up in defense trying to fend you off. But you manage to crush its skull, literally brain matter splattering everywhere as there's this large screech and a poosh as the gas goes sinking underneath the, the, the water. Um, you find yourself... Um, not quite waist deep. It's like thigh deep in this murky brackish water. And now the two dead bodies, one of them is being feasted upon by fire beetles. The other one is just floating there in the water in front of you um, as the ghasts uh, have uh, no longer of this earth, so to speak. Hannibal yells out, by the power of Paylor! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That's, uh, that's Thanks, Hannibal. That was uh, that was a much needed roll, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was nicely done. So you guys find yourself in the aftermath. You can hear the hissing and the uh, the the snarls from ghouls off in the distance, but where they're at, you don't know. We just know that they're in the distance somewhere. As we mm. sort of say, um, where you're overlooking now this. Um, this large cavernous area. Again, the ceilings themselves rise to about 20 feet, give or take. You can see that it extends out of sight into darkness. Um, you know that there were these these ghouls hiding under the water um, as you first came in. So it's quite possible that there are other creatures that, <clears throat> that may be out there. But right in front of you, you can see that apparently at least it's safe. Where do we want to go, guys? Hmm. Uh, only one way to go is forward into the water. Okay. Yeah, to the right or to the left, though, about... Uh, oh. hmm? I don't yeah. know. So this, <laughs> this area right here is a large stalagmite that runs, or it's basically it's not even a stalagmite or a stalactite. It's just this huge rock pillar that runs from floor to ceiling. <clears throat> Okay. So who's leading the way and where are we going? Go ahead and move your token. Valdrin, you're going to lead the way again? <laughs> I think whoever's got the light dart. Whoever's got the light dart. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about that flame tongue sword? I can help in lighting up too. Yeah, that gives about a uh, you know five or six foot radius of, of light. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go forward too. I'll can do us. That's only a five foot gap, though, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's about five. So you have to go single file from the rock formation around. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll get in line there. Okay. All right. So Brodus, you're leading the way. Um, as you guys move your way around the uh, around the uh, the cavern, you slowly make your way to the left. Um, you really don't see much more as you're slowly working your way um, through the water. So just kind of tell me where you're going to be heading, Brodus, and then I'll give you guys a description on what you see. I'm going to follow the wall. Okay. So you're just going to keep to the left and follow the wall? Yes. So eventually, as you work your way around through so several nooks and crannies, um, as you guys go, you pass through stalag pass by some stalagmites and stalactites like here. Again, the water is very brackish, but it's a consistently about three to three and a half feet deep. So it's roughly right up to um, the tops of your thighs, maybe right at your waistline, depending upon how tall you are. Um, but as you move around, you finally come to an area where it's actually all sandy. Um, 
and uh, a smooth stone sort of of uh, I see what it's doing. It's only letting me move you guys whatever your movement is. That's pretty weird. Um, eventually, you guys arrive in an open area, and as you uh, as you do, you can see um, uh, a tunnel um, leading ahead and a tunnel leading uh, off to the right. Um, and as soon as you arrive, suddenly you hear this. <laughs> And then it starts echoing throughout this whole area as suddenly you guys watch as several of these um, several troglodytes um, begin to appear um, from this particular uh, area. So how many of them there are, you don't know. Um, but there are several right here as they all have spears and they come rushing at you. Lowering their spears. Lowering their spears. Wait, maybe they think we're part of the evil because uh, they're coming out on the other side of the caverns. Could be, quite possibly. Or what could are we, be a different part of all together. Do? What are we going to do? Communicate my with hands, them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was going to put my hands up. Okay. And go. <laughs> there we go. In a very, in a very oh, no. non-aggressive tone. Oh yeah, that right. sounded really non-aggressive to me. Um, as they sort of, as they sort of, they they point their spears at you and they sort of like, shoo, go, you know, shoo, kind of pointing you to go back the way you came. And I slowly go backwards. Okay. No. Yeah, and we were exactly. Into... Well, I was just gonna wait until someone wanted to take over the conversation. Because <laughs> <laughs> my charisma is horrible. <laughs> All right, so are we gonna bring our paladin friend back up front again to to see if he can converse with them, or are we just gonna back up and go some other way? Yeah, do it. Really? Well, I could try, but you can try, man. All right. What the heck? Talk to them up here. Okay. <laughs> so once again, you guys go through the uh, the routine of trying to converse with these, uh, mm -hmm. and this one doesn't seem to be understanding anything you're saying, as the others sort of crowd up. All right. Is there, would anyone else, others understand? Would any of the rest of them understand? What are we doing? Hmm. Uh, he said, does, do any of the others understand? Oh, sorry. No, that yeah. uh, I just roll once for the whole group. I just roll oh, great. So I say, guys, this isn't working. You know, let's uh, come back to this later. We're not really equipped to handle these, and there might be more around the corner. So yeah, we, we don't want to. We have a whole cavern to explore, and these yep. creatures are living and not understanding. And I wouldn't feel good, you know, just slaughtering them. So, yeah, uh, I prefer to slaughter undead. Yeah, let's head off the other way. Okay. Okay. Um. So, way. as you guys get ready to leave, suddenly you hear this high-pitched squealing sort of. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's like the, the troglodyte sound, but it's a super high squeal. And suddenly one of the troglodytes wades out into the water and just points at you. He's like, <laughs> and he turns and sort of waves his arm. Huh? Turns yeah. which way? He sort of turn. he wades out into the water right toward Valdrin. And then he sort of starts, not to anybody in general, but he's just like, <laughs> And he turns and he kind of waves his arm. Is, is he and telling like, us to stop? Do you think? Is he? Uh, it's sort is he of like, like, like telling us to follow, follow him. Or yeah. Go that way. Yes. Follow me. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, follow, follow. we'll follow him. Yeah. So as you guys show right as you as you uh oh there he goes it's like where'd Bannable go he disappeared. I mean uh, not Bannable but uh, Brodus. So just as you guys sort of arrive at the shore. Um, you watch as this regal looking, if, if you can say a troglodyte is regal in any way, shape or form, but this particular troglodyte is 
old. Um, he has his skin, instead of sort of the, the reddish hue that a lot of troglodytes kind of have, his is really gray um, and very wrinkled and saggy. And you can see that he's got almost like whiskers that kind of hang down like a Fu Manchu. Um, and he has bones sort of through his his nose and through his snout and stuff. And he's wearing what I guess you could call finery because they're they're not the leather they're sort of cloth and silk looking and they've got all these different sort of uh um uh patterns and stuff on them like almost you know like i said regal to a point and he sort of walks up and he's got like a some kind of a either a a, a leather kind of a case um in his hand and he just sort of stops and he looks who man? Who man? And he sort of I, holds up his, holds up the, uh, whatever it is that, um, that uh, he's got in, in his hand. Um, what, what did he say again? Sorry, sorry. Who man? It's human. like like you're de- like yes. like like it sounds like human. It's sort of a. And now my head and I say yes, yes, yes. I point to myself. Human. You kill evil, human. Um. Yes. And in a very we, in a we. in a very broken common, um, he's sort of saying this. You take this, human. And he oh. sort of hands you this, whatever it is, case of some kind. Okay, I accept it. Okay. Um, uh, what, what is it? Sorry, it's a case or something? Yeah, it's some sort of a leather case or satchel or, or something, right? It's just, it's all moldy and sort of half falling apart. So whatever's inside um, is, oh. is, you know probably not protected very well um mm-hmm. but that's basically the gist of it it's just it's sort of like a leather satchel case that's really um, moldy and falling apart um but he obviously thinks it's rather important and so um he hands it to you okay like i said i take it and i okay uh, bow slightly and say you know, thank you okay we would then you and, um, kill evil man. <laughs> awesome. Yes, we did. Oh, you did already? Okay, he's happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, so this satchel, like I said, it's it's literally exactly that. It's some kind of a a very 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 old leather bound satchel. Um, inside you find a book of some kind. Um, most of the, the, uh, material has been destroyed, um, because of the wetness and the age and everything like that. But you do manage to find, um, a couple of things. Number one, um, is a passage in the end of this journal. Um, which appears to have made it through the centuries. And the second and probably more exciting find is that you find um, buried into the back another small tome um, that appears to be in perfect condition as if nothing that had been done to it damaged it. And immediately, um, Aster, uh, you and who's the other magic user we've got? Astrid, you know Brodus. Yeah, Brodus. You guys both recognize it as a traveling spell book. Um, and the, the little piece of parchment you say, it says, I should say, you read, and this isn't an ancient script, right? So it's it's um, looks to be uh, Sewell-based, right? And it is ancient, um, to say the least, but you manage to decipher... Um, as much as you can. It says, I have found the tunnels down and hope to escape the beast. All of the clan is gone or dead. I shall try to bargain for what it seeks. 
Curse Nalik's house for their arrogance. The faceless one shall devour them all. <clears throat> and in this, you find, like I said, in addition to this, you find what is, uh, appears to be a traveling spell book of mm. some sort. And it is chock full of spells. Okay. First thing I do when I pick it up is I detect evil on it. Um, so uh, detect evil is what range? 60 foot range? Yeah. So, yeah, 60 feet, so um, so, yeah. <laughs> so you detect a strong, strong sense of evil coming from the north, but nothing from the book. Hmm. Okay. I look over and I say, guys, I know where we're supposed to go next. Up north. Hmm. Which so what is the, that's the strongest source of the evil. Oh, and by the way, these two books are fine. The pass the passage was the one that had the curse house Nalix bit, right? Yes. And the other one's just a traveling spell book. Correct. Yes. Uh, anything particularly useful in the traveling spell book for our casters? So I'm gonna read off the spells real quick. Um you guys can take them down later if you want. Um or you can tell me if something specifically you want. Um, uh, audible glamour, chill touch, color spray, detect magic, enlarge, magic missile, read magic, and spider climb. It, uh, it has, uh, for second level spells, it has bind, darkness 15 foot radius, flaming sphere, magic mouth, scare, shatter, summon swarm. Level three, it has dispel magic, explosive runes, lightning bolt, hold undead, slow, spectral force. Level four, it has Dimension Door, Illusionary Wall, um, Phantasmal Killer, Shout, Remove Curse. And for fifth level, it's got Airy Water, Avoidance, Distance Distortion, and Wall of Force. So it would be extremely useful if we left prepared new spells and came back. But Yeah, I've never seen a spell book that had both yeah. Magic User and Illusionist spells in it <laughs> in the same book. But, Interesting. Uh, for the purposes of tonight... Yeah, but we just can't use it as like a scroll or anything. Yeah, you can. You can cast spells as a scroll. The difference is in oh. in uh, first level, there's a percentage chance of failure for casting spells that are above the level you're able to cast. So wait, wait, wait. wait. You can cast spells out of this traveling spellbook as though it were a scroll. Yeah, any spell in a spellbook. Forever. Be, yeah, any spell yeah. in a spellbook can be used as a scroll um, oh. if you want to, but then you lose a spell forever. That's good to know. So, as he hands this to you, and he just stands there looking at you expectantly. Um, okay. So he's just slow back away and say, uh, guys, let's um, head this way. And just for the record, for metagame purposes, for, uh, had you guys not been able to talk your way through upstairs... This would have never happened downstairs, so I'm just saying. Kind of figuring that. Yeah. As, yeah, very good. as the word gets passed. Anyway, that's just meta game purposes for whatever. All right. So we we should perhaps just ensure that the evil you're sensing and the evil he perceives are one and the same. Just to be sure we're not heading in a the wrong direction from his point of view. Okay. I turn back to the um, the prince Troggy and I. Yeah. Point up to the north, and I say, "You there. kill evil." Ah, uh, oh, man. Yes, yes, yes. I understand. For you, we kill evil. He as, wants us to go do it. As he sort of nods his head, as you say, "We kill evil." As he sort of nods his head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we talking about Slee Stacks. Slee Stacks, awesome. <laughs> All right. You wear the sneeze sack. <laughs> All right. So, as we move our way north, mm -hmm. hang on a second. I have a cat trying to climb up on my printer. Let's let's move <laughs> you guys. Let's move you and Mama away. How's that? Thank you. Let's right. take a bathroom break. Be right back. All right. Bio break for the paladin. Now's the time to strike, as all the undead <laughs> come swarming back. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. So. They hand you this. What do you guys decide to do with it? 
or what are we going to do? Are we going to continue moving north then? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. If uh, if I guess, I guess uh, does anyone in particular want to hold in the spellbook, or is that my domain? Because I'm down to hold it if nobody else wants it. I'm a, I'm a fighter, man. Magic is yeah. I, I I think there's one other magic user in this uh in this party. I believe. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, like a uh, multi class. Um, are we? Are we? Are you also a magic user five, or are you? Uh... Yes. Okay, so we both have an equal chance of using either of these. Uh, yes. Yeah, if we use it as a scroll. Hey Troy, is there um, a uh, limit on how long the turn lasts? Is was it like you said? It was three D twelve, right? For yep. Okay. 3D12, okay. and you can keep turning each round until you fail, then yep. you can't turn down creatures anymore. Yep. That's, All right, so least. for right now, I'm just going to say that the, the, the 3D12 rounds has expired, so whatever turned ghouls there were, they're no longer turned. Good to know. In terms of, uh, you said this was a traveling spellbook, and that impl the way you described it implied to me that it had some sort of magical protection on it. It wouldn't just... Not you know, necessarily. It just... Oh, okay. A traveling spellbook is just smaller, right? So okay, this is you. probably just a small sampling of the spells the actual wizard truly had. Got you, got you. Um, well, I'll put it in the... Uh, I'll put it in the, uh, uh, the waterproof spell case, and if we need to use scrolls, we can divide it up for scrolls uh, later. Um, okay. If that works out. Okay. So what to next? To the north. Yeah, head up north. There you go. All right. So um, you guys slowly move your way back up um, into the uh, the caverns proper. Um, as you f move your way around to the left, um, let me put or Paladin up there with you, because I imagine he would be helping to lead the way. Brodus leading the way as well. Cool. Um, I don't know if this is the order you guys want to go in, but that's just the order I'm putting in. So one thing that you actually find that is um, a little, I don't know if you can say disconcerting, but I don't know about disconcerting, but um, uh, to the, uh, as you look, as you're passing by, you see this chamber to the left, which is actually just a, um, uh, what a, a Why am I up front? <laughs> because a fire? you're leading the way. Um, so Great. inside, uh, you can see this is not really a, a cavern. It's more of a little alcove off to the side, but floating in the water, you can see there are three dead troglodytes. Their bodies ripped apart, um, partially eaten, bloated with the, the water and stuff as they just sort of float there dead in this little alcove as you're passing by. <clears throat> these, are, these are humans, you said? No, they're troglodytes. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, so apparently some of these troglodytes fell victim to whatever the nasty beasties were um, uh, in the water, which would make sense why they have these guards so heavily guarded at the entrance to their, to their domain, if you will. Um, so, are we continuing on, or are we going elsewhere, or what? I mean, we should continue. You want to try to search the bodies. I don't know. It doesn't look like they have anything on them. Yep, I just need to know before we continue on. I'll search yeah, the bodies. Yeah. All right. So, I need Valdrin to give me a dexterity saving throw, please. Yeah, of course. course. Let's see. Hold on for just a sec. Uh, saving throw. Did you see it is? Yes. Nineteen. Ooh. Nice. Pretty so, good. just as Valdrin, it's sort of like you've been you've done this before. It's almost like you know, you know, when to look, where to look, how to look. So you walk in and you go to grab this body, and the first thing you notice is that some of the flesh doesn't look eaten. It looks like it's melted away. And you just sort of glance up, and just as you do, you watch this plop of green slime drop out of the ceiling, and you dive backwards, almost landing in Valdris's lap, or Valorius's lap, I mean, as this green slime lands right on top of the 
the body you're getting ready to search and suddenly it almost instantaneously you watch as it starts to sizzle and burn and pop as the skin begins to turn from flesh um, into uh, a green slime type of material and within probably 10 seconds the whole body is consumed in this green slime that is now sort of floating in the water directly in front of you and as you watch you can see the slime itself begins to slowly I mean, this is all within just a few seconds, slowly um, begin to work its way um, toward the uh, uh, toward the wall um, as it slowly consumes the rest of the body. Um, you can see that the slime, once again, um, like I said, begins to get to the wall where it looks like it's going to be going back up to reset itself. Um, Look at Valorous. I look up at Valorous and I go, huh, I guess Jubilex is spawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I see that put my head through there right now. Look up at the ceiling. Right, you can still see there's, you could see that the ceiling in this place is a large chunk of green slime covering the entire area. So anywhere you move in there, there's a chance for this slime to sort of drop down on top of you. It's a huge swath of this stuff. I, I okay, say it's, it's all one piece, piece right? It's all off. one piece covering the ceiling? Yeah, pretty much it looks like for all intents and purposes. Yeah, the ceiling's Perfect. probably 15 feet tall, so it's kind of difficult to, to tell if it's... Yeah, well, within range, what I'm about to do... Okay. <laughs> pure disease on the green slime. Okay. Oh, nice. Hang on just a second. Uh... It's the one spell that kills it instantly, and it says all one unit. I want to see if there was a... Uh... Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to call it as one. So we'll call it. All right. So we could call that. So um, you cast your spell as you sort of gather up Heronius into your, into, uh, and you channel his energy as you tell him to, you know, get rid of, the, of the, the evil creature that is, that is uh, seeking to turn others into slime like itself. Uh, the unholy spawn of Jubilex, as, as Va uh, Valdrin may have said. And suddenly you watch as the slime begins to sort of shake and shimmer and turn colors from sort of a, a, a motley green into sort of this brownish gray and then suddenly into almost dust and it begins to break away and fall and little chunks of it fall into the water. Sploosh, sploosh, sploosh. And eventually, whatever is left of the green slime now lies in mottled gray chunks floating in the water, slowly sinking into the depths below. As you have now rid the world of a chunk of green slime. Don't forget to take off your spell yeah. slot. Yep. Yeah, I can do that twice a week. i got to annotate it on there somewhere. Yep. Okay. So, we are... Continuing to, uh, uh, yeah, it is. Cure disease twice a week, detect evil 60 feet, mm -hmm. lay on hands 12 hit points a day. Cool. I dig it. So you slowly move your way forward as you find the opening into the tunnel that leads to the west. Oops. As the tunnel. Sorry, I had to step away from it. Sorry if I missed something. Nope, we're good. No, you didn't. You missed him. He killed Green Slime. So we're good. Oh, wow. Good job. I <laughs> like it. It's kind of cool. Thanks. Oops. Uh, we're going to go into that view. Detect Evil still running or is it expired? <clears throat> um, I can kind of turn it off and on at will, but. Yeah. Um... Yep. I kind of have to concentrate a little bit so I can't like do it in combat. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was just wondering but how. walking, how... you know, I can turn it on. No, I was just going to ask me to make sure it's getting stronger as we approach, right? Yeah, it's at will, so. Yeah, so. He says it's a beacon. Yep, well, I mean, you. To triangulate the source. Yeah, but in order to do that, you have to stay and concentrate, right? And then you can move because I don't, I don't say that you can do this and then move along while you're still doing that, right? It still requires a little bit of a stop, refocus, where's it at? Okay, let's go. Stop, refocus, where's it at? Okay, let's go. It's not like a like an always-on beacon that's swooping around you with little blips on it to tell you where all the evil is, right? Still going to take a little bit of 
stopping and concentrating to figure out where it, where it may have been. So anyway, that's um, my story. Okay. I'm sticking to it. So, yeah, I mean, you can still, again, you can still stop like every 10, 15 feet to sort of refocus if you want. I'm not saying you can't do it at will. I'm just saying it's not a constant thing while you're moving, right? So it's like if you're in the middle of a combat, you're not going to be able to detect evil and swing your sword at the same time. It's two separate right. things. You would have to focus on the evil and then go back to combat, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that said, you just need to let me know whenever you're stopping to, to refocus or I'm just going to assume it's not on while you're moving. Okay, well, kind of going in a sort of a tunnel anyway, or heading towards a tunnel right. in one direction. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can see where this is going. Okay. All right, so um, as you detect uh, as you sort of turn on your detect as you guys come to this open tunnel, you can detect um, heavy evil coming from the far west. So you can see 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yeah, so from up this direction, there's heavy evil, but there's also evil between here and there. And you get the impression that based on what they did before, you feel that there's probably some undead lurking in the water in this chamber ahead. Mm. Wonderful. <coughs> Well, let's just hope there are just a few uh, drowned zombies down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, as you're moving forward? Yep. All right. I'll let you move. Where do you want to move to? Mm. Where my movement rate is. Okay. No, you're, you guys are moving fine. All right. So, as you guys move, as Brodus is sort of following the following the uh, the walls. Um, I need you to roll me a six-sided dice, somebody. Oops. Anybody, doesn't matter. I did it last time. Uh, uh, yeah. So let's I can do it again. Okay. Anybody? Not it. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> there we go. All right. So Brodus rolls as as um, because of your ability to detect them, you were not surprised as suddenly appearing up out of the water, several ghouls once again. Great, more ghouls. Probably the ones we turned before. Imagine that. Probably. Right. Yep. Imagine Five of them. That. Go figure. <laughs> Oops. Oh, we got company. Yep. All right. <laughs> so, um, I need to know what are your actions? Start at the top, Arthas. Turn undead. You're turn undead? Okay. Show that symbol right in the ghoul's face. All right. Um, Aster. I'm going to use the illusory magic missiles against this one right here. Okay. Uh, Brodus. Darts. Darts. Okay. Closest one. All right, so that would be this one right there. Right over here. All right, uh, Valdrin. Broad hold. Okay. I'm sorry, Bannable. Turn. Turn again, okay. And last but not least, Valorius. Are you all ready, Flame Tongue, to strike these? Okay. Devil down. All right, right up, to the, right up to the front. Go ahead and um, go ahead and do your uh, turn check, uh, Arthas. Okay. I it's a four, right? That is correct. Yeah. You need a four or better. Nobody, nobody. Stop. <laughs> Eight. Nicely done. Now I need you to roll a die twelve, please, to let me know how many of them e are twelve. Turned. Going right up. Come on, big one. Come on, big one. Ooh. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> As the only one to turn is... This is when I shoved the symbol right in his face. <laughs> no, is this, one, is this one right here at the right up here at the top? He, he disappears. What? He goes running. Yeah, because I don't want him to... Okay, you want me to... I'll tell you what. I will do the one here. I mean, that would make more sense. I mean, he's right there. You know, right, I, this I, is I, Dungeons I, and Dragons. Nothing makes sense. Stop. I said I shot the spoonful in his cool skin. So All right. He's ready to be kissing my symbols. I'm big on. All so. right. Aster, as you go to um, focus this energy on this ghoul, suddenly the ghoul turns and runs, so your turn is wasted. Mm -hmm. Bannable. Yeah. 
you moving up to up front somewhere or are you going to try to turn from behind no i'll move up okay I'll move you I'll move up the side to... okay i'll move you up there is that okay is that good enough yeah that's fine all right so go ahead and uh your turn is automatic i just need to know how many five magic five. number five Poof, as those five ghouls suddenly run away to the west once again. As that leaves no ghouls left in this room. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, that was a quick, that was quick yeah. combat as you once again turned. You guys are leaving me no so fun. Once the west. Ain't got no fun at all. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to bump up the the monsters for the next time, so that way you guys can't turn them. So, I, he can Good. more experience no, for the rest of us. Nothing more than a second level cleric. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> all right. So you guys move into this what I call a nexus, right? Um, the connecting tunnel widens into an immense vaulted cavern. The overhead is actually too high to see from here, so it's at least 60 feet tall here in this vaulted cavern. Um, but fluttering of bat wings can be heard far above. A stone column glittering in gold in the torchlight can be seen in a chamber to your left. A third passage leading northeast is blocked by fallen rubble, but water can be seen uh, or can be heard flowing through it uh, under the, uh, the other side. Lastly, a wide tunnel leads off to the northwest. So over here, you can see that there is some kind of a tall pillar that glitters in a golden color. Um, you got other stalagmites and stalactites right here. This tunnel you can see is completely blocked off, although you can hear water from this room trickling underneath it um, into the beyond. And then over here you can see that there is a tunnel leading this direction as well. So what do you want to do? Is there a body over there? Um, not that you can see yet. Okay. Well, I think we should check out that uh, pillar to the, to the southwest there, baby. You're going to check yeah, out cover the... our flank as we advance, yeah. Uh, check okay. out the ten feet. Use the 10-feet pole before you go, man. I'll, 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 I'll prod ahead with a 10-foot pole, yeah. Good idea. Okay. So, as you guys move, who's who's going first? Valorius? Yeah, I'll go first, yeah. You got the 10-foot pole? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So, as you move forward between these two massive pillars, you can see the third golden one uh, in the distance. So, two large columns stretch up out of sight here, forming sort of a welcome gate into this chamber to the left. A third pillar... A glittering gold in color stands at the center of the area beyond. Beyond that, you can see the cavern sweeps to the right and out of sight. Um, actually, that should be to the left out of sight. So it kind of sweeps out of sight over here. Okay. Um, a skeleton clad in plate mail armor stands against the gold column, its arms wrapped around it as if it is hugging the stone goodbye. So you can see that right here, there is a plate mail um cover or, or, or a skeleton wearing plate armor is um, hugging this particular um, st uh, stone column as if he's hugging it goodbye. Human or dwarf? Uh, looks to be human from here. Um, can't really tell, but size-wise, human, elf, something along those lines, humanoid in nature. Is it moving? No, it's just like it's wrapped against the stone, hugging it as if it's Hugging it goodbye. And, and, and uh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm cool to move forward, but uh, I, I will stop about 10 feet from it and uh, maybe just prod it with my 10 foot pole a bit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you get to right about here, right? That's not quite 10 feet, but about, right about 10 feet. Well, let's bring the rest. Let's bring your friends with you because we want everybody to enjoy the sights. Oh, please. Um, so just as you get there, 
again, the floor is sort of muddy and kind of slippery and stuff. And you go to prod and suddenly you feel almost as if something is tugging at you. And the next thing you know, you feel yourself being pulled in the mud slowly, ever so slowly toward the body. Even though you're prodding it, you feel that you're, whatever it is that's pulling at you, is, it's almost like something invisible is grabbing a hold of your shoulders and pulling you forward. And while you try to resist, it just sort of slowly pulls you um, toward it. Can, can, I, can, I raise, can I raise a ten, can I raise a ten foot pole uh, to that you know skeleton to kind of stop myself from getting pulled? Forward, I need you or? to roll a strength check for me, please. And DM. Yes, sir. Uh, would I be able to while he's trying to do that? Would I be able to pull out my bag of flour, one of my bags of flour, and toss it? See if uh, anything shows. Sure, absolutely. So. Okay. While you're doing that and you move up and you move up toward him um, and you sort of toss the flower um, while I need uh, Valorius to give me a strength check so with a minus, a 20-sided dice, 20-sided strength check. Add your strength, whatever your strength, uh, like, a, like a strength. Of So, um, Valoria or, or Valdrin sort of tosses flour out, and you see there's nothing there, like pulling him or whatever. It's just like the dust sort of settles, um, but the force gets stronger, and it sort of pulls you about two feet closer to this, uh, um, uh, toward this body or this or this pillar, if you will. So now you're like eight feet away and you can feel this is really tugging at you now. And suddenly you watch as your shield goes flying um, and it slams into the stone and it sticks to the this pillar of rock. Um, it's almost as if something is holding it by a magical force. And you can feel yourself being tugged even stronger as you try to pry away with the bar. Um, I'll give you a... a I'll give you another strength check, this time at a, uh, a minus two, since you got a minus two and a plus two um, for your strength. It's sort of a straight-up roll. I need you to 18. You manage to, using the pole as a force, um, push yourself back, but in the, um, in the actual act of doing that, the pole bends and snaps on the last half, but you get stumbling back forward or stumbling backward into um, uh, Valdrin and uh, Bannable who are behind you and they sort of catch you and pull you back as you manage to get yourself out of uh, from where this feeling of being pulled um, is. Um, however, again, you can still see this skeletal body hugging the stone and now your shield is stuck to the stone above the body. This is just Extreme magnetism there. Yeah, it sounds like it's some sort of ferromagnetic. Yeah. yeah. Good thing I didn't try that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anybody in plate mail automatically rolls at a minus three. Ouch. So, um, but yeah, that being said, to, um, that said, you didn't see anything that, uh, um, like, different or, or out of sorts, but you can see past it past uh, over in this area you can see there's sort of a raised ledge um with the remains of something laying on it but from this distance you can't tell what it is um, and you did not see anything in this side tunnel when you were pulled closer um so at least there's that so i i can see did i see what was on this ledge here you said or i could, um, you I could really it's make... it's the remains of something but what it is you don't know can I climb the walls and get and look at the ledge? Um, let's see. Yes, um, I will allow that. Is so. Let's just put it this way: you have to remain at least ten feet away from the the pillar, otherwise you'll start. Um, That's what fine. are you? Well, what are you wearing for armor? Do you have just leather? Leather. Yeah. So um, yours. So leather armor. You would still get pulled 
uh, toward it because of your sword and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But you would not have any of the penalties that somebody wearing any kind of armor or metal armor would. Uh, well, did would you want to leave anything metallic with us then? What was that? Did, did you want to leave anything metallic uh, with us and see what you can? You can. Even uh... see? Or, or, or is that not a good idea? You, you don't want to go without any weapons, right? Yeah, like with that, I, and besides that, if I'm not getting any penalties, then... Yeah. Let me go ahead and uh, let's see. My wall climbing is, uh, what, 92%? 92%. So give me two wall climbing checks to make it over there. Okay, just a second. Let me pull that up. Nicely done. Nicely done. So you managed to climb up high enough and off to the side enough. It takes you about 15 minutes before you manage to get all the way down there. But looking down on the ledge, you can see that there is um, uh, what looks to be like a, like a rather large armadillo-looking like creature. Um, and it has these two big, huge antenna coming off of its head. Um, but it looks like it's not moving. It looks like it's more rotted. Um, so you can't tell if it's still alive or not, but it doesn't look like, um, it is from this, from this viewpoint. I'll climb back down and convey that. Okay. Ooh, so I asked uh, the uh, person, Hey, did you happen to see the tail? Did I, I see the tail? Yeah. Did you see the tail? Yes. I think we, I think I, yeah, and it, is, is it is kind of fanned out the tail? Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. these propellers? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I thought, I, yeah. <laughs> nice. Gygax's private little jokes in the Monster Manual. <laughs> yep. What? what I do? what do you do? what I miss? <laughs> Nothing. Yes. <clears throat> and so at one time, the creature was feasting quite nicely. Not quite so much anymore. <laughs> yeah, I can see why. See the cre see, and that's that's the beauty of this is, it used to be, people would get stuck to the lodestone, and then the rust monster would go out there and eat, and yeah. but now unfortunately nothing was there for a long time, so he ended up not surviving. Poor guy. Poor thing. Poor thing. Unless yeah. he reanimated. <laughs> 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 So, yeah, you're gonna tell us that's another ghoul, right? Yeah. What? Oh, that this now. The ghoul rust monster. Oh, the ghoul monster. <laughs> that would have been cool. God, I should yeah. have thought of great. I want to take notes from you guys. You guys are yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can put that in the tournament adventure. Yes. So, so. where you need? Yeah, where to now? Well, I've never done that before. <laughs> where Shall to we now? proceed, gentlemen, or do you do you want? Should I, can we try retracting the shield with the ten foot pole in some way? Do you think that would work? Um, from, from, from what it looks like, um, the, the shield has metal banding on it and stuff. So it's stuck to the, to the okay. lodestone. So it would require somebody to go out there and grab a hold of it and make it their, their strength checks in order to pull it free and then get it, um, you know, another three strength checks to get it out of the zone, if you will. So you, it, boss. It, it would require four strength checks to retrieve it, but somebody would have to go that's not armored in the first place. And then he is saying duck for anything that is alive in there. Yep. And dangerous. I, I kind of would like my shield back, but... Uh... That's the easy part. You know, I was just, you know, trip down, run up there, grab the shield, and run back. Full suit strong enough to uh, be able to resist the pull. Of the shield from the stone, be able to pry it off. You're a pretty strong character for that. Well, I, th I think I have the highest strength, so um, can, can, can I take off my banded armor? Sure, you can, Benjamin. Sure and you can. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna wait, wait up there. Uh, okay. Not, not, you know, with nothing metallic on me, and I'm gonna try and get my shield back. Okay. Can I never get a one when I want one? Okay. All right. So <clears throat> you uh, you move your way. The only um, the only tug and pull you feel is from the iron in your blood being pulled toward this lodestone. 
<laughs> and your fillings. Yes, and your fillings. Have you been to the dentist lately? You manage to get up to the shield. You reach up and you grab and you start to tug. I am going to need four consecutive strength checks, please, in order for you to pull it and then be able to wade your way um, out of the... And I'm actually going to give you an additional plus one. Um, if you make the first check, each check after that will be an additional plus one. So you roll straight up right now, plus your strength bonus, right? Um, then the next check, if you make it, oh. natural 20. You've just made it two places. Ooh. So now you only have to do two additional checks. Um, I'll give you an additional plus one on this one. Oh, as your second check fails, pulling you two feet closer. So now you're going to have to make another strength check. As you manage to get those two feet back, next strength check. As you fail and you move two feet closer again. <laughs> it's going to take all day. Take all day. Hey, hang on a second. Why couldn't any of us just simply attach a rope to him? You know, we could all just yank him back. Quite possible. But on this last check, on this last check, oh, you find that the shield is once again stuck back to the stone. Oh, boy. I'll give it another How about this? We tie a rope around you. You go back there. We all tug while you tug to um, lend our strength to yours to get that shield back. You're like a big tug of war. Yeah, well, if, if uh, that, that sounds like a good idea to me. Okay. Dungeon Master, you good with yep. that? I am good. <laughs> you rolled a natural one. That is freaking awesome. Oh, my awesome. God. That is freaking <laughs> All right. So you managed to tie to this. Now, everybody's strength, since there's one, two, three, four, five, six of you, I am going to give you a plus two for each person. So it's going to be a plus 12 on your roll as you pull. Plus 12? Yep. So, but one person rolls, and then I'll give you a plus 12. So that's a 13. As you guys begin to oh tug, as you guys <laughs> begin to tug, it just doesn't break free. You're going to keep trying? I'd like to try again. Okay. You can't keep rolling ones forever. <laughs> Man, I am notorious for ones. You have no idea. <laughs> I this can is, see that. This is awesome. Yeah. There we go. Go. Yes. Yes. Right. As you guys manage to pull it the first two feet, go ahead and roll another check. 18. As you pull it another, now it's going to be a plus three for everybody. So now it is going to be a plus 18. Go ahead and roll. Unless you roll a natural one. Boom, the last two pulls, you guys manage to get your shield back undamaged, although it is a bit scraped up and banged up from when it first slammed into the uh, into the lodestone the first time, but you managed to retrieve your shield. Nicely right. done. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. That is hilarious. <laughs> Glorious is hilarious with the rolls, I tell you. <laughs> I like it. So you managed to retrieve your shield. And you did, guys did find lose, yourself. Did we lose monkey boogers? Um, you know something I'm wondering. I thought it saw him log off. Yeah, he dropped, and I don't know what happened. Yeah, I thought he came back though. So he mentioned in chat that uh, that there was a uh, like thunder. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Might have uh, might have been that. That's fine. So I can I can roll his his attacks for him and stuff like that. So that's not a big deal. Okay. So. All right, so you guys managed to find yourselves once again, um, once again in between these two pillars, um, looking at the uh, the lodestone. So, hey then, why don't we um, back away a little bit? You know, up north, decide whether to try the door thingy or the passage. Okay. You guys find your way up there. What are we going to do? You guys find yourselves looking to, there's a northwest and a northeast passage. The northeast passage is once again one of these that looks like it was um, purposefully collapsed. I put my armor on uh, just, just, to, just to say it. What's that? 
I put my armor back on. I, I know you probably figured oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yep. Oh, well, actually, I would have just said, hey, you know, your armor class is 10, whatever your dex is, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so you guys find yourselves in this area. Again, you can hear the trickle of water leading from this cavern into the tunnel that is collapsed on purpose. To the west, um, you can see that... Um, the uh, the water um, continues like waves back and forth as if creatures have recently moved in that direction, which you assume that's where the ghouls went when you just turned them. And where does your detect evil point to now? Good question. Where does it point to now? I think the stronger of the two was um, on the northwest side. But, I don't know, suggestions? I think we head out, uh, out west there. Okay, nope. West it is. To Westeros. <laughs> Heading to Westeros? Now, yes. <laughs> now, um, just make sure. Just to make sure, I understand. I want to check something. Um, we've seen evidence that there was some sort of spellcaster here before. Is there yeah. any way we could check? Um, maybe even just opening it with a bolt. If that uh, collapsed tunnel was actually a collapsed tunnel, not a, a regular tunnel filled with illusions that make it look, you know, collapsed. Just, you know, give it a poke with a 10-foot bolt. Uh, sure. See if it goes through. Yeah, absolutely. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and do your check. Um, you as you walk it? over and you, you poke at the rock and mm -hmm. looks real or feels real. Okay. Fair enough. Just wanted to be sure. Okay. All right. So we continue to move our way west, I assume. Am I correct or am I incorrect? Yes. Okay. Hang on, give me just a sec. All right. So you guys begin to move your way west. As you get into this central area, the light begins to dim. Even the continual light being given off by Brodus's um, magical dagger. Let me make sure I got it centered on here. I always forget to look at the. Uh... Do we still have the flame tongue out? Huh? Is the flame tongue out? Uh, as far as I know, yeah. Oh, and then what about that light? Is it dimming or is it the same? Um, no, that's what I'm. Uh, the the fl all the light is. All of it. Yes. So I just want to make sure that I got you guys. I'm uh, making sure it's centered on the uh, on the map. <laughs> I always forget when I move this that I, I need to make sure that people can see the map out in the out on the Discord or on uh, Twitch. So um, as you as you guys move into this again, it, you see that it begins to get darker. So the the bright light being given off by um, Brodus's magical dart um, or in magically light enhanced, enhanced dart begins to fade and, and dim at the farther west that you guys move. And when you get to right about here, um, the light itself is only maybe about a five to, I don't know, not even 10 foot radius um, from what Brodus is, right? So you guys can, you can't really see um, anything around yourselves, right? As you find yourself sort of stuck in this area, um, unable to see or penetrate the, uh, um, the, the darkness beyond. Um, it's almost as if there's sort of this magical light sort of overpowering the uh, the light of the dagger um, and no sooner than that 
then the light on your dagger goes out and the heavy darkness kind of lifts but now you're in sort of regular tunnel darkness so aster you can see um you can actually see um uh oh looks like oh are we reconnecting okay looks like my uh my stream disconnected and then reconnected so it looks like we're back it was pretty quick though um so anyway um aster you realize and, and uh brodus you realize that there was probably some sort of a magical darkness here and the continual light spell cast upon the dart sort of counteracted that and they both snuffed each other out um so now you're basically in sort of regular darkness in the caverns so nobody can see anything other than the light being given off by the flame tongue sword which you can look it up and see but i'm pretty sure it's like a about a five foot radius or something like that so it's basically a 10 foot circle um all the way around you um but i'm not 100 percent sure but um, we'll call it that about a five foot radius of of light being so now um like i said Valorius, you've actually got a, a light around you. Um, the uh, elf can actually see um, to out to 90 feet, right? Um, but you don't see anything. All you see is sort of darkness um, and various different shades. Um, hey, we got a raid, Lord Kasumba. Hey. Woo, my first yeah. raid. Hey, Asher, thanks, man. Woo. You guys are coming in just in time. Look at this. Look at this. I think he planned it that way. He felt bad. Lord Kazuma felt bad that I was ragging on him for taking my time slot. And now I'm getting all these people following. Dude, you rock. You rock, They're saying man. the audio. They're hey, saying yeah, the audio, you, Sean. When, when your stream went out, uh, your uh, audio is not coming through now, Sean. Are you serious? Yeah. Seriously? Uh -uh. Are you kidding me? All right, let me try.